I'll note that uh, we are meeting remotely to minimize the risk of an exposure to uh, COVID-19. And uh, there are virtual options for the public to submit comments for the public meeting as authorized under Minnesota statute. Commissioners are calling in and the meeting is viewable via uh, webcast and TV options. And the video is also posted on the website, uh, usually two days after the meeting. And I'll ask the secretary to please call the roll. Secretary Ringgold, you are muted. We still can't hear you. President Kogel, I think it would be appropriate if you took the role and the meeting is recorded so the secretary can go back and get it later. Let's, let's see now, are you able to hear me now? Yep. I can. Okay. All right, and just, it's always a little confusing. It's muted on my screen, but it's on live in the AV room, or in the boardroom. So you are televised live in the boardroom. Okay, uh, Commissioner Bourne. Here. Commissioner Musich. Present. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Severson. Here. Commissioner Meyer. Here. Commissioner French. Here. Commissioner Forney. Here. Vice President Vita. Present. President Cogill. Here. You have a quorum. Very good. I'll ask for a motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner French. We didn't hear you, Commissioner French. Okay. Commissioner me? French, I can, yep, there you go. Commissioner French. Aye. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Kogil. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. You have eight ayes, one absent. That carries. I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes from Wednesday, March the 17th, 2021. A move. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the minutes from Wednesday, March the 17th? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the secretary to please take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. I saw it, Meyer, but I couldn't hear it, Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Perfect. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. Aye, aye. 
My my internet's really bad. I'm sorry. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. You have eight ayes, one absent. That carries. Uh, moving on to uh, reports of officers, I'll turn it over to Superintendent Van Gora to give us an update on uh, the park system. Thank you, President Colgill and commissioners. It's uh, great to see you all. Uh, I'll begin um, real quickly here with, I want to read a thank you letter that came to staff, which I also think is important just to recognize. Uh, and if you give me a moment, I'll go through the rest of the agenda, of course, the rest of the updates. But this is a quick thank you that we receive kind of quite often, but it's just good to, it's good to give an update and uh, let you hear some of the great comments that we hear from our residents. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to thank, uh, is to Evan, Emily, Anthony, Nick, and everyone else at the arena. Nice arena. I want to take a, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for your help at the arena and with all the administrative stuff this year to those that I interacted with directly into those behind the scenes. I know that the challenge this year, um, this has been for all of you, all of us really through it all. You have been terrific in, in your work with and have made this almost impossible situation so much easier to navigate on behalf of the many Thursday night group. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all your perseverance, dedication, and thoughtfulness. The park board should be very thankful that they have such an all-star team running their arenas. Here's to next year when it should be much easier and much more enjoyable for, for all of us. I just want this from Tom, uh, I think is it Welty? I just want to read that, uh, just to show some of the things that we re do receive about the great work that our staff does every day in our park system. So um, thank you for that, um, Tom. Thank you for that letter. And thank you to Evan, Emily, Anthony, Nick, and everyone that works our ice arenas. I appreciate it. Aquatics. Since we've returned to the pool after the new year, Aquatics has had 132 lifeguards registered to take the American Red Cross lifeguard course with us at Phillips Aquatic Center PAC. The majority of course participants are ages 15 to 20 years, 20 years old. This year, uh, the school year, the Junior Swim Club has given youth an after school opportunity to participate on a swim team and stay healthy during this pandemic. So far, the school year, 259 youth have participated and 97% are Minneapolis residents. The final Junior Swim Club runs from April 5th through May. Uh, May 14th. Uh, adult Athletics. Adult Athletics has over 600 teams registered for the spring season and registration continues to climb. We are proud to be offering new adult opportunities this spring, including grass volleyball and broom ball. Um, great work um, by our adult sports staff. Congratulations. Golf. The golf season kicked off on Saturday, May 13th, with the opening of the driving range at Columbia Golf Course and the golf course opening over the next couple of weeks. Golf is off to another fantastic start in 2021 with over 8,000 rounds played and a $600,000 in revenue. By comparison, we did not have our first round of golf played until April 18th in 2020. A really huge thank you uh, to the golf staff and for their hard work getting the courses open early for the 2021 season. Youth sports, youth track. The youth track and field season starts in May. We currently have 141 youth registered to participate. So really it's important, of course, to sign up at your local park and get involved. Youth basketball, the youth basketball season has, uh, the youth basketball baseball season also begins games in May. Uh, we currently have 244 youth registered for baseball and 91 girls for softball. Fun on the Run. Fun on the Run will be uh, at five locations uh, during spring break this week. Um, the programs run from 1 to 4 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday, April 5th through the 9th at Luxton, East Phillips, Falwell, Lindo Farmstead, and Sibley. Great numbers on Rec Plus. It's kind of getting back to normal a little bit, so it feels really good. 
So thank you to the staff for the great work you're doing to that, for that. Red Plus, Weber. Weber Red Plus egg hunt. The kids searched for nearly an hour. They had a blast searching and opening their eggs. Spring has sprung. It's great to see those kids out there. Uh, Red Plus Citywide Book Club. As part of our racial equity work, we're going to incorporate a citywide book club. The goal of the book club is to read one of the book's selections one once per month with the children. After reading the story, staff will have a brief discussion with the children to see what they took away from the story. There are no right or wrong answers and what they took away or learned. The following are examples of recommended books. Um, and of course, drawn together by um, Amelie uh, Byers and I Am Enough by Grace. Recreation centers, uh, Wait Park. Hennepin County grants success. Wait Park finally has installed new outdoor adjustable basketball courts for the public to enjoy. Two hoops were purchased through Hennepin County grant program with help from the Wait Park Community Council. The, loops are, the hoops are adjustable so that all ages can enjoy playing. Great news, and thank you to Hennepin County Grants. Falwell, Kempo Martial Arts class are committed to the promotion of the martial arts and the benefit of mankind through the teaching of humility and self-restraint. Classes are open to all experience levels where participants learn Kempo martial arts techniques, practical self-defense, physical conditioning, and character development. East Phillips, youth line staff and community youth use solar playhouse kites and the vision of designing a solar park house. They utilized one of the kits, kits, I said kites, sorry, kits, and added to the creative process using recycled materials at the park. The solar park playhouse kits were a great activity and really inspired the youth in the areas of design, architecture, and solar power. Kiwaden, staff at Kiwaden handed out the PYO or paint your own cookie kits for Easter and spring. Each kit include edible paint and a small paintbrush so participants could easily create the colorful cookie design. Customer service. Customer service community events unit has been busy. Staff have transitioned the annual Minneapolis International Festival to a virtual experience. The event is typically held at Central Park Gym. However, with COVID, restrictions still in place, went with the, safe, with the safe alternative. This virtual event will be on the Park Board website from March 17th through April 11th. The virtual event will showcase the many different cultures in the city of Minneapolis and surrounding communities with music, dance, art, food demos, and more. There will be dance groups from Peru, Egypt, and Ireland, cooking demos from Native American chefs, and various art from, culturals, from cultures all over the world. Sounds like a really great event, so uh, please uh, get involved. Nice Ride. Nice Ride Bike Share launched for the season today. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, Lyft has worked to execute installation and unhooding um, of bike share stations all over the city and within the parks. The license agreement provided MPRB customer service staff a structure needed to make some minor adjustments to locations and set the stage for another great season of cycling throughout the city and within the Minneapolis parks. Uh, watercraft storage and buoys. A sure sign of spring, the MPRB watercraft storage season is about to begin. The popular program allows to store their personal watercraft on the shores and in the shallows of the Minneapolis waters. The rack storage, suitable for canoes and kayaks, kayak boats, um, boasts 552 spaces at 14 sites and it is nearly full. The sailboat, the sailboat buoy program allows for the storage of 380 buoy moorings at Bidet Makaska, Lake Harriet, and Lake Nicomas. Lake Nicomas. In a typical year, the assignment is a result of a lottery drawing held in the Armitage Recreation Center gym. Due to concerns related to large gatherings and COVID-19, customer service use and event permit staff have asked additional questions of applicants to assist in assignments. We'll be conducting the drawing at headquarters in a controlled setting without attendees. 
Environmental stewardship, forestry. Forestry department staff are removing ash trees infected with emerald ash borer before tree planting begins. A delivery of over 4,000 new trees will be arriving this week. Crews will transition into full planting mode next week. Planting of 8,000 trees is expected to continue until early June. Environmental management, Eloise Butler. The Eloise Butler Royal Fire Garden and Bird Sanctuary will open on uh, Thursday, April 15th uh, for the garden's 114th season. The garden will open uh, Tuesdays through Sundays from 10 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Many spring wildflowers will be in bloom as the gates open for another season. Visitors, visitors can be on the lookout for uh, patica, trout lilies, and more. Visitors can also keep an eye out for nesting owls and migratory birds. Due to the ongoing pandemic, visiting the gardens this season will also will be much the same as 2020. Visitors, visitors will uh, follow the one-way route throughout the garden to allow for social distancing and narrow trails. The experience was well received last year by visitors who appreciated the tranquility and safety of their visit. Um, so let me share a few visitor comments with you from 2020. It felt like we were in uh, the garden alone. Don't change anything. A great system felt so safe the whole time. And the last, beautiful, the best place ever as usual. Great comments and wonderful work by our staff. Um, lake ice out on Minneapolis lakes. Ice went out on all Minneapolis lakes in 2021 over a 12 day period in March. Spring Lake was the uh, first lake to have full ice out on March 18th. A storm on March 27th hastened ice out on the chain of lakes. Ice left the chain of lakes by March 29th, about a week earlier than the long-term average for these lakes. Birch Pond was the last lake to have ice. NPRB staff monitored the ice um, on and the ice off conditions each year. The NPRB has 30 to 70 years of annual ice on and off records for Minneapolis lakes. Springtime prescribed burns. Spring is the time for prescribed burns. Prescribed burns are one of the management tools used to maintain native plantings. Uh, when, fire is, uh, when fire is suppressed, shrubs and trees can invade those areas, uh, out, uh, out competing desirable native wildflowers and grasses. This spring, Minnehaha Creek Watershed District contractor, Landbridge Ecological, will burn the stormwater uh, BMPs at Lake Nokomis, Bede Makaska, and Cedar. Friends of the Mississippi River contractor, Native Resource Preservations, will burn the planted prairie at Ole Olson Park. Additionally, National Park Service staff will be implementing a control burn at Cold Water Spring, south of Minnehaha Park. These contractors will have Minnesota DNR trained staff on site, along with the necessary fire control equipment. Contractors obtain all necessary permits required for a prescribed burn. City of Minneapolis 911, Minneapolis Fire Department, as well as NPRB police and customer service are notified prior to and upon completion of the burns. Park users are notified through eGov notifications. April to mid-May is the optimal time to implement prescribed burns. The burns will take place when specific weather and environmental conditions are met, including the optimal prevailing wind direction, humidity levels, and cloud cover conditions. If the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency issues air quality alerts or the DNR places burning restrictions for the metro area, this will limit or end the ability to conduct a burn. Asset management, maintenance and operations. March means the start of spring and the start of new tasks at facilities across the park system that the asset management department needs to get ready for our park users. Below is a sampling of some of those tasks. Sweeping paths, readying and deploying equipment to workspaces, removing snow from hockey rinks and opening drains in uh, skating rinks, removing graffiti from uh, totter cans, and establishing load pack uh, trash routes. 
The crew will also be repairing tar uh, turf damage caused by snow removal machines. Setting up in what you see is setting up installing batting cages and ball fields. Also uh, reinstalling tennis court nets. Um, and the team is also inspecting boats to make sure that they're ready for the season. Uh, we are inspecting and replacing parts as needed, oars, oar locks, or sockets, etc. Boats also get a good cleaning and inspection to make sure that all have anti-skid tape at the bottom. Lastly, some edges of the boats are in rough shape, so we will work to get those edges smooth out and ready for use. I'm always amazed by, seriously, the amount of work that we do across our system and the detail that we spend, so I'm always incredibly impressed. So thank you to our staff for all the work. It's an incredible work and tedious, and I'm really grateful, and I'm sure our users are. Gardeners, the horticulture staff is hard at work pruning. Uh, gardeners are out in the neighborhood parks working on late winter pruning projects across the city. Jeremy and Andrew worked with park keeper Gary at East Phillips to clean out the shrub beds along the building and parking lot to prevent collection of trash and make it easier to clean out during the season. Gardeners Rochelle and Teresa maintained 45 plus duck houses, uh, duck, yeah, duck houses system wide, monitoring the houses for safety, productivity, and cleanliness. Wood duck houses are, uh, are serviced twice a year in late fall and late winter. Keep your eyes peeled for wood ducks on our lakes and in our wetlands in the coming weeks. Another example of the amount of work that they do, the tedious work they do, it's incredible. Equipment shop. The gardeners are excited for the purchase of a lithium battery operator workman to utilize for their gardening needs at the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden. The rack on the rear can hold tools like shovels, rakes, and items like weed trimmers and leaf blowers. And I'm extremely excited about that to see a battery operated Toro workman. Pretty cool. And our continued effort to uh, this type of equipment. Planning, Victory Park update. Construction is on hold for the summer. The improvement projects will be reviewed, revised in the coming months. Construction of the splash pad, drinking fountain and basketball court Fencing improvements are on hold this summer because the two construction bids that the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board received for this project exceeded the project budget. This project is based on the North Service Area Master Plan, which was adopted in 2019 and included guiding principles for aquatics in the area and our master plan for Victory Park. Here's what the next, here's what's next for the project. NPRB staff and consultants will revise the project and schedule a meet the uh, and schedule to meet the available budget. Uh, NPRB will, con will conduct a second bidding process for construction. It's possible the bids for the splash pad construction will be separated from bids for the other park improvements. Additional announcements will be made when the time frame for construction is confirmed. Cedar Lake, Lake of the Isles Master Plan. The Cedar Lake and Lake of the Isles Master Plan will guide the improvements and stewardship for, at Cedar Lake, Lake of the Isles and surrounding parkland parkways and trails for the next 20 plus years. Thanks to everyone who participated in the Cedar Isles Master Plan project since it was announced on November of 2019. There are two new major announcements to share. Community engagement will continue through summer of 2021 before beginning to create a draft plan and Dean Parkways have been added to the project area. The timeline update is response to the many challenges our city experienced in 2020 and planning staff will use this additional time to continue to broaden those voices who were able to influence the master planning process. Meadowbrook Golf Course Clubhouse Project. The Minneapolis Park Mission Board is planning a new clubhouse at outdoor space at Meadowbrook Golf Course after the previous clubhouse suffered irreparable damage due to a pipe break during the winter of 2015 and 16. The clubhouse reconstruction project is divided into three zones. The first, a Western zone, is where the new clubhouse will sit and includes the building and a patio adjacent to the practice screen. The second zone is a large space for a food vendor with an open seating area. The third or Eastern zone is an open lawn area where a large tent can be installed during tournaments or other gatherings. A new accessible path from the parking lot to the clubhouse will be created as part of the project in addition 
to suitable stormwater management solutions and landscape features around the building. Uh, generous outdoor patios um, will offer visitors a place to relax before or after a run of golf. Boone vendors will continue selling food and beverages at a dedicated at the dedicated patio space. Construction is scheduled to begin in late summer 2021 and finished by April 2022. Use of the golf course will not be interrupted during this project. A temporary clubhouse has been in use since the course reopened in August of 2017 after extensive flooding. Uh, 2020 annual report. Last week, uh, we shared copies of the 2020 annual report with commissioners, staff, and hundreds of our elected nonprofit and community partners. The report summarizes our, our response to our year of intense challenges and highlights our progress toward the visions outlined in our 2007-2020 comprehensive plan and the 2018-21 to 21 strategic directions established by commissioners. Despite the, the challenges, we demonstrated our resiliency as an organization and saw the tremendous value of Minneapolis parks to our community. I believe parks are the city's most critical asset and I'm honored to serve as superintendent during these unprecedented times. I'm extremely proud of all that we have accomplished together in 2020 to serve the people of Minneapolis, particularly our youth. I want to acknowledge the tremendous work and dedication of our employees, the contributions of our volunteers and the continued collaboration and support from our many partners. Due to COVID and so many people continue to work from home, this year we printed a limited number uh, of the annual report and are encouraging people to read it online at www.minneapolisparks.org backslash annual underscore report. And I believe that is my final report, I think I made it before 5.30, President hey. Coville. <laughs> and I apologize, a lot of information, but it's always good to share with our board and our community. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Superintendent. Does anybody have a question for Superintendent Bangora, uh, uh, Vice President Vita? Thank you, President Cogill. Uh, thank you for that great presentation, Superintendent Bangora. Yeah. I have a question that's unrelated to the um, the presentation, the presentation you just gave, I intended to include this in the um, the resolution about hiring a grant writer, but wanted to know if you could provide any updates. Um, I would appreciate quarterly oh, updates, oh. but if you could um, sure give us any updates right now on how that's going. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, Vice President Vita, uh, President Cogill, do we have? A little bit of time yet? We're okay. Uh, um, I, we let's, uh, now, it's now just about five thirty, so we'll uh, have you Sounds answer good. that question just after we go through our open time. We okay. we do have. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, and uh, we we do have uh, a certain number of folks signed up. I believe we have uh, eight um, open time uh, sign ups this evening. Uh, so the time being now just about 530. Uh, it is open time, uh, which is the park board's opportunity to hear from uh, the public. Um, this is uh, our opportunity to uh, hear from anybody who wishes to speak on any issue. We just ask that you refrain from any discriminatory or harassing language and you refrain from speaking on any pending litigation our personnel matters. Um, we have uh, eight speakers signed up. I'll allocate uh, one minute for each speaker to address the board. Um, and uh, we ask each speaker uh, when you unmute yourself, if you could state your name and if you're comfortable, your address for the record and then your uh, one minute begins. Um, I'll ask uh, our technical staff here if we have our first speaker um, logged in. Um, that's Nathan Helgeson. Is Nathan on the line? Uh, can you give me a second, uh, Mr. Cargill? Yes. Like one minute. Yep.
I'm ready. Sorry for that, sir. That's all good. Thank you. Um, do we have our first speaker on the line, Nathan? Do we have Nathan on the line? Or should I go to the next person? Uh, yes, Nathan is on the line. Very good. He's a minute. Thank you. Nathan, uh, you can go ahead, state your name and uh, your address if you're comfortable, and you have one minute to address the board. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Nathan Helgeson, uh, 6401 Lindale Avenue South. And um, I today am bringing a uh, petition to the park board here regarding Lindale Farmstead Dog Park. Um, Lindale Farmstead is a fixture for dog park owners in South uh, Minneapolis and the neighborhoods surrounding Lake Harriet, one of seven off-leash dog parks. The favorite for many dogs, um, but is a favorite for playful, uh, active dogs due to its vast unobstructed field footprint. Um, however, with little shade and no water supply, our furry friends struggle to stay cool and hydrated throughout the summer. Many park goers bring bottles of water in an effort to fill water bowls, but with no facilities nearby, water quickly disappears on hot summer days. This combined with limited shade means our dogs are at an increased risk of heat exhaustion. Additionally, winters in Minnesota mean early sunsets and a dark park, and many dog owners do not feel safe attending the park after the sun has gone down. With sunset beginning as early as 4 p.m. in the winter, this leaves many working people without a safe off-leash dog park option. The solution we, the undersigned, are seeking is the installation of a drinking water supply line and a floodlight or lights at Lindale Farmstead Dog Park. Um, Minneapolis Parks and Recreation currently collects license fees for the use of off-leash dog parks. And we, the community that has helped finance the establishment and continued upkeep of Minneapolis uh, off-leash dog parks through taxes and license fees would like to see some of those funds allocated to the installation of the drinking water supply line and floodlights. Um, we you. do believe that these additions, I'm sorry. If you could wrap up your comments. Yep. Um, I will just let you know, um, the petition has 410 signatures from park goers, um, that are in support of this. Um, and any further information uh, or communication, I'm happy to, to provide. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. And if you could submit uh, your uh, petition to the secretary of the board, um, that would be uh, great. Our next speaker is Jennifer David. Is Jennifer David on the line? Uh, no, that person is not on the line. Okay. Do we have John uh, Schwerman? Yes. All right. Uh, John, if you're there, if you could unmute yourself and um, um, in support of it. Um, you, and any further information, uh, you could mute the live stream. Be you. Thank 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 you. John, you can state your name if you're comfortable, your address for the record, and you have one minute to address the board. Go ahead. My name is John Sherman. I'm at 3837 18th Avenue South in Minneapolis near uh, Lake Hiawatha. And I'm just calling uh, in support of the lake and uh, urging the park board to support the master plan. I think um, everyone agrees that there are deep problems affecting the lake and the parklands. And this is a chance to um, take real action uh, on those issues, and if that's not done, it's it's basically just kicking the problems down the road. So, um, you know, I think uh, everyone agrees that uh, storm sewers running directly into the lake is not a good idea. I don't think anybody thinks a polluted lake is acceptable. Um, so, you know, I just hope that um, the board will choose to act on this issue and. Uh, clean up the lake, restore the wetlands, and help build flood resiliency and uh, create access for the broader community. Thank you. Thank you, John. Our next speaker is Anthony Scallon. Is Anthony on the line? The lake is acceptable. Um, so, 
you know, I just hope that, uh, um, hello? Hello, Anthony, you can uh, go ahead if you state your name and if you're comfortable, your address for the record, you have one minute to address the board. Hello? Uh, President Kogel, are you calling on Sean Conaty? No, I was I was looking to have Anthony or Tony Scallon speak. Okay. Now. Okay. But it appears he is not on the line. So, uh, Sean, go ahead. Um, you are next on the list. So, if you'd like to go ahead, you may. Okay, you can hear me. Yes. Right? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello. No, I was I was looking to have Anthony or Tony Scallon speak. Okay. I'm trying to speak. Go ahead, Anthony. If it's okay with the commissioners. Yeah. Anthony, if we can hear you we can hear you now. Try that one more time. Uh, Anthony Scallon, are you there? Okay, I'm not hearing Anthony, so I'm gonna call on Sean Connedy to unmute yourself and you have one minute to address the board and if we could keep everybody else muted, that would be great. Yes, I'm here. Um, I now live at 22 Malcolm Avenue Southeast, but I'm calling to I'm ask. Not you know. Anthony, so I'm going to call on Sean Connery to unmute yourself. You have one minute to address the board, and if you could keep everybody else muted, that would be great. Tony, if you could uh, mute the live stream behind you. What? Just you can go ahead. You have one minute to address the board. We're going to have to move to the next speaker. Sean Connedy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thanks. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Okay. This is Tony Scott. Go ahead, Sean. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Sean Connedy. Uh, I live in the Standish neighborhood and I am co- I'm chair and co-founder of Friends of Lake Kailapa. So, Hey, everybody. So tonight is the culmination of six years of intense and sometimes difficult public process. So I'm hoping that you'll approve the plan to preserve Hiawatha Golf Course for future generations by making it ecologically responsible, sustainable, climate resilient, and more equitable. It has been my honor to get to know you all these past six years as, I've, as I have worked with you and the community on the issue of environmental justice to bring long overdue changes to our collective stewardship of Lake Hiawatha, our public park spaces, and our waters. We have worked through painful and difficult times to find a compromise. And I want to thank my fellow CAC members for their dedication. I want to thank the Friends of Lake Kiawatha. Our work represents thousands of hours of labor and hundreds of volunteers. We have removed more than 8,000 pounds of trash, removed invasive species, planted hundreds of native plants. And uh, the work, we represent the collective hopes of a future that realizes the reciprocity I know we can achieve together. I'm a, we are excited about the trash pickup amendment added and we fully support and applaud the amendments commissioner vita has crafted for this plan thank you so much hello thank you sean hello tony 
Go ahead. You have one minute to address the board. Yes, we can. Please continue. Okay. I just am calling to ask you not to adopt your new business. We ought to be able to talk about this. This is news to the people I'm with in the senior caucus who will suffer as you start to close the parkways. Um, I don't think the pandemic should allow us to uh, keep seniors and handicapped off the parkways. I know this isn't quite there, but the rumor is you will as soon adopt a new resolution closing all the parkways like you did last year. I urge you not to do the new business and send it for a public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Our next speaker is Roxanne Stir. Is Roxanne on the line? No, sir. Right. We'll go to Holly Jenkins. Is Holly there? Is that the handicap off the park? Yes, Holly is there. Right there. Hello. Hi, Holly. Uh, you have one minute to address the board. If you just state your name and if you're comfortable, your address, and you uh, can go ahead. Sure. Uh, my name is Holly Jenkins. I live at 1130 Tiffany Point in Egan. Um, I am founder and director of a nonprofit wilderness in the city, and my comments tonight are directed with regard to the Lake Hiawatha um, Golf Course Master Plan Amendment. Um, specifically, I will focus on some of the natural resource concerns, which uh, clearly is what this revised plan is all about. Um, I just have three main points I'd like to make. Lake Hiawatha is part of the regional, the Metropolitan Regional Park System, and I am sure you agree that the integrity of this system must be protected if public investment is to continue. However, ongoing practice at Lake Hiawatha has allowed tons and tons of pollution into this public investment for several years, harming both the community and the wildlife. This thereby diminishes the integrity of the regional park system as a whole, and if this continues, it begs the question whether or not it should continue to be included in this nature-based regional park system. If this plan is adopted, the stormwater management plan must be prioritized. If this plan is not adopted, stormwater management for Lake Hiawatha must still be prioritized. Further, to maintain the integrity as a component of the regional park system, the impacts on natural resources include both the quality of the facility's water resources and its impact um, to the wildlife population and habitat, including migration routes, breeding sites, and plant communities. With that in mind, preserving and enhancing core habitat west of the lake would allow for a minimum impact to the natural resource base and, minim and minimal new recreation use. That's not to say that recreation use will not be accommodated for. It will well be accommodated by the amenities around Lake Nokomis and the improved golf course near Lake Hiawatha. And third, just a quick final thought, as I recently visited Lake of the Isles. This is a beautiful area and clearly affluent looking at the neighboring homes. And then I drove over to Lake Hiawatha to see firsthand where the outlet is that's spewing pollution into this lake unabated for so long. And I couldn't help but wonder, what if this was occurring on Lake of the Isles? How long would it take the, the MPRB to act on behalf of those neighbors? And again, I hope you agree that the, neighboring, the neighborhood surrounding Lake Hiawatha deserves the same attention to keeping their lakes healthy as those in the more affluent portions of Minneapolis. So thank you for letting me um, speak on this thank, item. Thank you, Holly. Our next speaker is Jan Bailey. Jan Bailey has been admitted. Great. Hey. Hi, Jan. If you could uh, state your name, if you're comfortable with your address for the record, and you have one minute to address the board. Yep. I thought I was going to have three minutes, so I was all prepared for that, but I'm going to try to be quicker. Go ahead, Jan. You have one minute. Okay. Um, I'm Jan Bailey, and I also live near the uh, Lake Harriet Park. Um, I'm calling in today in support of the Lake Hi Hiawatha Golf Course Master Plan. Uh, like Meg Forney, I was around in the 1990s and concerned about the parks, and at that time I was able to watch the unfoldment of the plan to address or to save Lake Cal then Lake Calhoun. You know, the lake had become so polluted from watershed runoff, chemicals that would kill the lake eventually if not stopped. And brave individuals on the park board and city government stood up to find the money, uh, piece it together, and uh, plan the catchwater basin on the southwest end of the lake, which filtered out chemicals before they reached the 
the lake, and it worked. Your own 2015 report shows that the uh, the filtering worked. So the result today is a very vibrant lake, Bidet Makaska, which continues to delight users, add qualitative and financial value to the city, and serve as a jewel in our system. So I'm right calling today to ask uh, for two key issues to be put really to stood up for water purity and community equity. So the problem of garbage pollution in Lake Hiawatha is huge, as you all know. And Sean mentioned the eight tons. That's the weight of four average mid-sized cars, all the junk that is there. Um, if this deluge of debris isn't stopped, there will be no willing volunteers. I spent um, two and a half hours in a two-by-two square-foot spot on the shoreline in 2019, and it just was backbreaking, but I made barely a dent in the layers of garbage intermixed with organic matter. Social psychologists have known for at least 20 years that individuals feel better and behave better in a physical environment of beauty and order. Thank this you, This is another... Oh, your comments. Uh, one more sentence? Yep. Yeah. This is an instance where, where the investment in purity, beauty, and healthy order of our park springs guaranteed paybacks. It fosters a populace that appreciates and feels appreciated, thus making for a thriving community and a future of promise. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. Do we have uh, Jennifer David on the line? Uh, no, the next person is Sean. Last name starts with a G. Oh, Sean Gazowski. I do have uh, Sean here. Uh, is is Sean on the line? Yes, this is Sean Gazowski. Sean, uh, you go ahead. You have one minute to address the board. Hello, this is Sean Gazowski, and I'm a volunteer with Friends of Lake Hiawatha and a master water steward. And I also recreate over by Lake Hiawatha year round with cross country skiing, running, and hopefully pretty soon kayaking. So uh, we wanted to thank Vice President Vita for working on amendment to move ahead with the Hiawatha Master Plan with the nine hole uh, flood resilient golf course, an African American food vendor, and an extended. Uh, leadership and employment with African Americans within the Minneapolis Park Board golfing. Um, we're so excited about the master plan being approved because a lot of funding is being held up uh, and it needs the Park Board to approve the master plan to unlock dollars that are being set aside with the City of Minneapolis Public Works and with the Minnehaha Creek Watershed District, as well as with the Minnesota House Trails of Legacy Bill from this year. So by approving the plan and getting this funding, we'll be able to expand your own recreation with walking, biking, skiing, as well as golf, uh, reducing pollution going into the lake, expanding wildlife and habitat and flood resilience, and protecting the nearby homes and also protecting the legacy of golf, um, creating a really top-notch nine-hole golf experience with indoor winter golfing and being able to help teach a new generation of golfers to enjoy the game. So anyway, I'm so excited about the future of the park. And thanks again for working to pass the Hiawatha Master Plan tonight. Thank you, Sean. That concludes our speakers for open time this evening. Uh, Mr. Colgill, um, uh, Jennifer is on the line. She's on the line, if you can take one more. Oh, great. Uh, Jennifer David, if you're able to uh, unmute yourself, uh, you can state your name and, if you're comfortable, your address for the record, and you have one minute to address the board. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, this is Jennifer David. I live in Loring Heights at 400 Groveland Avenue. I love our Minneapolis parks, and as the seasons have been changing, I was doing some research on what the rules were for biking versus walking specifically on Lake of the Isles. And I just encountered some communications things with park boards as a homeowner 
in the city and was curious if any improvements for how you're reaching residents was underway. For instance, again, once the season is transitioning and the, part, the paths go from bike versus walking. Um, also, reminder to the community for safety about not going over 10 miles per hour on paths, especially when everyone has cabin fever and is trying to get out. Um, perhaps a notification about e-bikes and e-scooters. Um, it sounds like my time is up, but in short, it's regarding communication and wondering if there could be a community task force put together because the communication is not clear on social or the website. Thank you for your comments, Jennifer. Um, and I can have our staff follow up with you once we have your email information. Yeah, I reached out to Robin Smothers. She suggested that I go to this meeting. Thank, thank you, Jennifer. Um, I think that now concludes our speakers for the evening. Um, not seeing anybody else signed up. And I will uh, close our open time um, and return to uh, the superintendent's report uh, as the superintendent uh, currently is prepared to respond to Vice President Vita's question. Uh, superintendent Bangor, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, great. This won't take too long. So thank you, um, Vice President Vita and President Cogill. This gave me a little time to kind of <laughs> put some things together here. So. Um, so Rook, I, I think the question that I think uh, Vice President Vitale was asking about was the uh, position, the grants position, donations position, um, and what has been um, to date um, kind of an update. So I can give some quick things here. Um, particular in the new funds, as you will see in resolution 2021-163, we submitted a proposal and was awarded $259,000 from Youth Prize for the 2021 uh, to 2023 for expanding um, the reach and effectiveness of existing culturally relevant street reach outreach efforts, um, identifying um, additional outreach workers, providing connections to resources, connecting youth to workforce training and employment and engaging youth in developing their own solutions to address violent crime. Um, trainings will be provided by Youth Prize, uh, Mentor Minnesota, and the Search Institute. So we're extremely excited and very proud of that. I think um, Heidi can give more information on this eventually, but I believe it's 100,000, 100,000, I think 53,000 or 59,000 in the next three years. And so very, very proud of that and very excited about that because it's doing direct work into our communities. A uh, couple more things, uh, Comcast lift zones, as you all know, the work of um, Heidi and with staff worked with, excuse me, worked with Comcast staff and ITS for the installation um, for lift zones in, at 42 recreation centers and of course other NPRB facilities. Uh, currently, um, she's working on developing standards for programming for lift zones. Uh, something really exciting too now, as you know, the scholarship fund active net funding raising campaign. So we, um, she drafted a guidelines for the scholarship requirements to review it, of course, it's been coming soon to, to the recreation division and also leading the campaign committee of NPRB staff to launch the active net donations when registering for programs. And we talked about Roundup, but this is a really exciting time that we can continue our scholarship program through any resident walking into a facility and donating and supporting our programs. So very excited about that as we continue to look at ways of assisting and supporting the youth of Minneapolis. Uh, the work that's been done around the Walt Dietzik Innovation Funds, um, I think there was 62 approvals that Heidi and the team worked on, 62 approvals or proposals in the total of $337,000 funding for the 2021 spring, summer, and fall program. Significant support that's going forward there. And she's also created a proposal form to be put into a digital format by ITS. It's really exciting because I'm very much into data and information. 
Um, and then she's also looking at um, working with community connections team um, in supporting it in the um, funding and data collections around our youth prize work and also looking at YMAP funding and looking at program proposal reviews. And then the last things that we're that I can quickly give an update on that I kind of pulled together here, so forgive me, I'm working through this, is the pending grants that we're working on. Um, and several of those uh, are proposals in process or submitted. The Parks Foundation, we submitted a grant. It's due by uh, April 15th on swimming lessons for Rec Plus kids enrolled at Harrison and Weber. Um, awards will be announced in mid-May. And that's part of the uh, People for Parks joining the foundation, putting out grants out there. And I think it was something under about $8,000 that we are uh, asking for requests. I think it was $7,700. We also submitted a proposal for the AmeriCorps full-time summer staff to work from June 7th through August 14th to assist in our pop-up parks, our outreach for teams, and uh, to connect them with the community resources. Uh, those awards will be announced in mid-April. And the last one, which I'm really great that she tracked this down, was the Minnesota Department of Human Resources, homeless assistance, funding for outreach to encampments due April 15th, awards announced in May. So it's really just in support uh, of, of organizations around homelessness and making sure that there is um, support there. So uh, those are some of the things I can give report on. I hope, um, I hope uh, Vice President Vita, uh, that's what you were looking for as far as some information. If there's any questions I can answer, I'll be more than happy to. Superintendent, you uh, definitely answered my questions. Thank you so much. It seems that this position has paid for itself and then some already in the first quarter. So thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you, Superintendent. Not seeing any other hands raised for the superintendent. Uh, we'll move on with the agenda. Uh, I'll ask for a motion on our consent items. Those are resolution 2021-162 uh, through resolution 2021-167. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to please take the role on the consent agenda business. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. You have seven ayes and two absent. That carries. Um, moving on to reports of standing committees, I will turn it over to Chair Forney. On behalf of the Administration and Finance Committee, I'd like to move resolution. 2021-157 resolution, resolution authorizing the execution of a purchase agreement with BC Properties LLC for the acquisition of a park site in the North Loop neighborhood of Minneapolis, Minnesota for $2,101,567, including base park improvements. Yeah. Uh, the resolution has been moved. Is there a second? Second. The resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or uh, desire for a report? Any discussion? Not seeing any. Uh, so I'll ask the I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll. 
Um, President Bourne, uh, I believe Council Rice just wanted to remind the board that this will require six votes. Our President Cole Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Secretary Ringgold, that sounds good. Um, so this does require six votes, and I will ask the Secretary to take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. You have seven ayes and two absent. The resolution carries. Uh, moving on to uh, our next report of standing committees, uh, Chair Meyer. On behalf of Planning Committee, I move resolution 2021-158, a resolution approving the concept plan for Dickman Park improvement. The resolution has been moved. Is there a second? Second. Mm -hmm. Resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or request for a presentation regarding the concept plan for Dickman Park? Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. <clears throat> Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. You have seven ayes and two absent. The resolution carries. Move resolution 2021-159, a resolution approving of the interpretive signage agreement with the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization for installation and maintenance of interpretive signage at the Skate Plaza at Elliott Park. The resolution has been moved. Is there a second? Second. The resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All questions? Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, I'll say uh, thank you to uh, staff and to MWMO and to all of the partners who've made this skate plaza part possible. Uh, this is just another um, piece of the puzzle of creating a really dynamic space at Elliott Park and uh, really grateful for all the work that's been done on this and for the support of um, many organizations and Hennepin County, um, MWMO, et cetera. So with that, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. You have seven ayes, two absent. Move resolution 2021-160, a resolution authorized the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board staff to apply for grant funds through the 2021 Skate Park Grant Program for skate park improvements at Central Gym slash Park, located at 3400 Fourth Avenue South, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Resolution has been moved. Is there a second? Second. The resolution has been moved and seconded. Um, is there a discussion? Uh, Commissioner Bourne. Uh, thank you, President Cogill. Um, <clears throat> Superintendent, this is just a 
question related to our grants program in general. Um, I, I have considered applying through uh, applying through this program in the past. In fact, I, I think we may have at different times. Um, and, and so I, I'm just looking for some context. There was an assertion made that our grant writer position has paid for itself already, but I like. I, I know we've applied for grants last year and the year before and the year before going back better than a generation. So I'm wondering if we could just do some compare, if we can receive for our next meeting, just a report of how many um, grants and partnership contracts that we received, that the Minneapolis Park Board received in 2020, uh, 2019, 18, going back to 2015 without a grant writer position. Uh, yes, President, President, or sorry, uh, President Cogill, uh, Commissioner Bourne, I can do that. Uh, I will go back and get some more information on that. Thank you, Superintendent. You're welcome. Any other discussion to the resolution 2021-160? Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll. Commissioner, Bo Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner French. I'm going to, I'm going to come back to Commissioner French. Look like he is in the waiting room. Um, Commissioner Forney. Aye. Commissioner French. Here. Here. Uh, com Commissioner French, this is a aye or nay vote. Commissioner French. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. Commissioner French. You have seven eyes, two absent. That carries. Chair Meyer. Resolution 2021 161, a resolution approving installation of public art mural by artist Jindai Berry on the outdoor basketball court at Phelps Park and approving a license and maintenance agreement for the artwork with the Elevate Foundation. The resolution has been moved. Is there a second? Second. The resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion? Any discussion? I'm not seeing any. Uh, thank you to staff for moving this forward. I hope that many, this is the start of a beautiful tradition and that many more basketball courts will be decorated with unique murals throughout our system. Um, and uh, with that, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. You have seven ayes, two absent. Point of information, President Cogill. That carries. Uh, yes, Commissioner Bourne, what is your point of information? 
Um, I, I just wanted to clarify for the record not to not to erase any artists that have already been working with the Minneapolis Park Board. We are, we already do have several beautiful on uh, on basketball backstops throughout the park system that have done that have been produced by an array of diverse artists. And I just I hope this is a continuation of a great con tradition and not a start of a new tradition. Because again, I I don't want to erase those artists and those artists of color. Thank you, Commissioner Bourne. Moving on uh, to unfinished business. Uh, I will ask for a motion on resolution 2021-136, which is a resolution approving the Hiawatha Golf Course Area Master Plan and is amendment to the Nokomis Hiawatha Regional Park Master Plan. So moved. Second. A motion and a second on the resolution. I would ask uh, for um, any hands to be raised. I have a vice veto. Thank you, President Cogill. I have um, a slate of amendments um, that I would like to be voted on. Very good. Um, if you could read uh, the Headlines of those amendments. Um, Absolutely. So um, amendment, the first one is to establish career paths in golf management and core superintendency for Minneapolis youth. And then um, the second would be to create youth employment opportunities at Minneapolis golf courses. Celebrate culture through, the third one is to celebrate culture through vendor operations. And the fourth, where is it? Where do I have it? It's to rename the clubhouse at Hiawatha Golf Course and any subsequent replacement of the existing clubhouse in honor of Solomon Hughes. Um, all right, I will uh, take those four amendments as a slate. And ask second. Them. Second to those amendments, there is a motion and a second to amend the master plan uh, with the four amendments that v Vice President Vita just stated. Uh, the first to establish career paths in golf management and course superintendency for Minneapolis youth. The second to create youth employment opportunities at Minneapolis golf courses. The third to celebrate culture through vendor operations and the fourth to rename the clubhouse at Hiawatha Golf Course and any subsequent replacement of the existing clubhouse in honor of Solomon Hughes. Do we have any discussion uh, discussion on the uh, slate of amendments? I will uh, start with the amendment maker, Vice President Vita. If you want um, just to quickly say that I got some feedback since the amendments were posted um, from members of the Black community saying that they would like for staff to have a little bit uh, more of a timeline at how these amendments will be implemented and when they will be. So I would, um, I don't know if we need to add anything, but I would ask for an update in a couple of months. Um, for a timeline and, and implementation and design for these amendments. Thank you, Vice President. Is there any other discussion on the amendments? Um, I'd like to commend the Vice President for bringing these forward. I think that they are, uh, they're well thought out. They are um, all amendments that I can support and uh, will will encourage others to support as well. Um, Vice, uh, who else do I have? I have um, Commissioner Musich. Thank you, President Kogel, uh, for this opportunity to speak to these amendments. Uh, I I'm very supportive of the entire slate. I wanted to share with my colleagues that if they're interested in learning more about Solomon Hughes, then the brief but very informative biography that's included in uh, the resolution that there's a great publication put out by the Minnesota Historical Society that talks about his contributions to the desegregation of the PGA golf in Minneapolis, as well as the clubhouse at Hiawatha. And if you need um, a link, I'm happy to share that with you. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Musich. Commissioner Bourne. 
Thank you, President Cogill. Um, I just wanted to also state my appreciation for Vice President Vitas' work on bringing these amendments forward. I, I agree that they're very intentional and well thought out, um, and I will be supporting making the amendments, and I'd encourage my colleagues to do so. Um, I do still have some reservations about the main motion, uh, and I'll be discussing those then, but I think that the if the main motion does pass, I mean, I think it's it would be great that these amendments are included. So uh, thank you, Vice President Pita, for that. Is there any other discussion on the amendments to the Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll on uh, the four, slate of four amendments to the Hiawatha Golf Course Area Master Plan. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Sorry about that. Aye. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. Commissioner French. Aye. Aye. Do you have eight? I did. Thank you, Commissioner French. I have eight ayes, one absent. That carries. Uh, Commissioner Meyer. Thank you. I would like to propose two amendments. I can do them separately. Um, the first amendment is to revise the plan to suggest the MPRB allocate uh, staff and funding to manually clean trash from the lake until mechanical solution is constructed and to revise the plan cost estimate and any associated text. Uh, the amendment uh, made by Commissioner Meyer uh, to provide staff and funding relative to um, maintaining and cleaning uh, Lake Hiawatha has been made. Is there a second? Second. Uh, amendment has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion, Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Um, I just wanted to uh, make this happen because it could take a long time um, before the plan actually comes into implementation um, once passed, but we need to be addressing that trash in the meantime. It shouldn't be left up to volunteers uh, to do that. Um, the amendment is just a suggestion, but I think it should be stated in the plan um, and then it would be need to, needed to be uh, fleshed out in the budget later on. Thank you, Thank you. Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Meyer. Any other discussion to Commissioner Meyer's amendment? Uh, Commissioner Musich. Mr. Meyer, can you um, repeat the amendment for us. You're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry. Now. Okay. Yeah. I will read it out again. It is to revise uh, the plan to suggest the MPRB allocate staff slash funding to manually clean trash from the lake until mechanical solution is constructed and, and to revise the plan, cost estimate, and associated. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Are you, um, could we have staff mute whatever phone is talking right now? Um, so are you submitting the, the second amendment separately that you had put in the... Um, packet. To yeah, I was going to move that one next. 
Okay. I wanted to make sure that I understood what we were discussing right now when I make my comments. So I do support us finding ways to more actively work on collecting trash from lakes. This is a problem not only in Hiawatha, but in every single city, lake and creek that has uh, public infrastructure dumping stormwater into it. Uh, so I'd be happy to discuss uh, what kind of staffing and costs would be associated with that effort um, as part of our budgeting process. But I do not believe that we want to amend the master plan to only do that work in this lake. Thank you, that's all I had. Thank you, Commissioner Musich. Any other discussion to Commissioner Meyer's amendment? Not seeing any hands raised, I'll ask the secretary to please take the role on the amendment, which is to revise the master plan to su suggest the MPRB allocate staff and funding to manually clean trash from the lake until mechanical solutions are constructed. Revise the plan, the cost estimate, and any associated text. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. No. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. No. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. You have five a ayes, two nays, and two absent. That carries. Commissioner Meyer. Um, I'd like to move an amendment uh, to revise the plan to limit vehicle parking to the existing number of vehicle spaces currently provided to revise the plan cost <laughs> estimate and any associated text corresponding. Uh, resolution has been made, is there, a, or the amendment has been moved, is there, is there a second? Second. There is a motion and a second on Commissioner Meyer's amendment to the master plan to revise the plan to limit vehicle parking to the existing number of vehicle parking spaces currently provided and to revise the plan cost estimate and any associated text. Um, discussion, Commissioner Meyer. Thank you. Um, just to speak to the amendment, uh, the plan as it's currently presented increases uh, the parking at the parking lot by, I think it was about 25% or so. Um, it would be the first time during my term anyway, um, that we've expanded the amount of parking um, in our system. And I think we should be going in the opposite direction. Uh, in the city's 2040 plan, they identify the goal of having a 38% reduction in vehicle miles traveled. Uh, at the state level, uh, the state of Minnesota is, is um, putting forward a goal of reducing vehicle miles traveled by 20% on, on a statewide level. I think that's a really important goal for us to meet our, our climate goals. And, and, and this is one of the ways that we can be a part of that is to simply not expand uh, parking from what we already have. Um, so I would ask Commissioner to support this. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Uh, Commissioner Music. Thank you, President Kogel, for like, allowing me to speak to this amendment. Uh, the master plan that we are considering this evening for adoption is one that significantly will increase the usership of this park. Uh, estimates initially were uh, over 100,000 new users to this location. 
Um, the parking on this portion of the park is very limited because right now the amount of users is limited to the number of people that can be actively playing rounds of golf at, the, at that time. Um, the 25% increase in parking is a modest increase and the neighbors are, are already pointing to Niha Falls as an example of what happens when you don't provide enough parking. It spills over into the neighborhoods and becomes incredibly disruptive to people's lives. So um, I will not be supporting this amendment. Thank you, Commissioner Musich. Uh, Commissioner Seeperson. Uh, I won't be supporting this uh, either. Uh, this, this can be seen as discriminatory as um, Northside residents, um, particularly uh, folks uh, want to drive uh, to this uh, facility and, and use it, uh, particularly if you're golfing. I, I don't know how many uh, golfers will be able to put um, golf clubs on their back and take a bicycle or or if they have a, a small children that they want to go golfing with. Um, it, it could be uh, this, this could pose uh, more of a struggle. So I'd ask my commissioners not to support this. Any other discussion from commissioners? Seeing none, I'll just uh, commend Commissioner Meyer for bringing this forward. Um, I think this is uh, the right thing to do. Um, yes, there will be more people visiting this site. We're also in the process of completely transforming our transportation system in Minneapolis to address major climate issues. Um, that are also the reason that we're considering this uh, particular plan this evening. Um, and I think this is the least we can do um, to ensure that uh, we are creating a space that's built forward thinking um, and uh, that takes into account the major implication of climate change and its impacts to our, especially our most vulnerable communities. I'll ask the secretary to please take the role on Commissioner Meyer's second amendment, and I'll read it one more time. It's an amendment to uh, limit vehicle parking to the existing number of vehicle parking spaces currently provided, or we'll revise the plan cost estimate and any associated text. Commissioner, Commissioner Bourne. Abstain. Commissioner Musich. No. Commissioner Severson. No. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. No. no. Commissioner Forney. No. 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 Thank, thank you, Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. No. Vice President Vita. No. President Kogil. Aye. You have three ayes, four nays, one abstain, and one absent. Uh, that uh, amendment uh, fails. Seeing no uh, other hands raised, I we're at the main motion now. Um, are is there any other discussion regarding the master plan? Any other discussion? Is there any other discussion on resolution twenty twenty one one thirty six? Seeing none. I will ask the secretary to please take the role on the resolution. Um, I'm sorry, Chair. Uh, Chair Kogel, I could not figure out how to get my hand thing up. I've lost my bottom menu. Okay, all right. Have you raised your hand here? Okay. I have raised, I have raised my hand here. Thank you. Um, I had a long conversation with Commissioner Vita today about concerns that community members have been bringing to her about the appropriateness of the board taking a vote on this issue. 
uh, during the trial of Derek Chauvin. And <laughs> and it's very compelling to me to hear from her that we that we should be waiting until that trial ends to vote on this issue. Um, I don't know if she, if she wants to speak to this at all, um, but but I feel like it would be appropriate for us to postpone the vote to the conclusion of the trial of Derek Chauvin. So, so I'd like to hear from my colleagues um, what they think of the postponing in that manner. Uh, is, okay, to clarify, is, is that just a, are, are you it's making- It's an inquiry of my colleagues and, and depending upon what I hear, I'm, I may make a motion. I move to call the question. Second. Second. And a, a motion and a second to call the question. I, I will want to honor that Commissioner Vita had her hand raised before others jumped in uh, without raising their hands. So I will ask Commissioner Vita to um, speak. Thank you, President Cogill. Um, I, first, I want to say thank you, uh, Commission, Commissioner Musich, for hearing me earlier today. Um, I was definitely set to move forward with uh, voting on the resolution today, and I'm super excited about the amendments I brought forward. I've done a lot of work to, to uh, come to bring these amendments together, but it was something that I've never, mm -hmm. I never thought of or expected, mm -hmm. but in the last couple of days, I've had mm -hmm. folks from the Black community reach out and say that first, they haven't heard from a couple of commissioners. They haven't been able to reach a couple of commissioners or get responses and know where commissioners are on this, um, which way uh, they're going to vote. And so people are concerned that the park board is going to make a decision that will weigh heavily on the black community during the time where during a time where there's already something heavy happening in this city. So, again, thank you so much, Commissioner Musich, for hearing me today. Now, I know this is important to you. This is in your district. But again, I could have never foreseen this coming um, up. And it has. And I can't unhear what I've heard for the last couple of days from the Black community. Thank you, President Cogill. Thank you, Vice President Vita. I really would like to pass this plan. Um, I understand that there are some concerns in the timing. I'm, I'm very much in support of uh, a plan that actually preserves uh, golf and the history of golf at the site. Um, Point of order, I, th I think I called the question, am I out of line on this? Um, John, you're speaking uh, after I called the question. Commissioner, Commissioner Severson, you've not been acknowledged to call the question at this time. You didn't raise your hand. And I'd like to continue um, my remarks. Um, point of order, um, point of order Council President Rice, do I need to raise my hand to call the question? As I was, I believe, I, believe I have a point of order following uh, Commissioner Severson's point of order once that's dealt with. I believe. Commissioner Severson is asking a point of parliamentary inquiry. Did I understand that correctly, Commissioner Severson? That is correct. Thank you. Right. I'll ask the council to weigh in on this item. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. it, I believe that it, um, we debated this at the la last meeting. I mean, it, it sounds like both Commissioner Bourne and Commissioner um, Severson are seeking to be recognized. I've not heard the chair formally recognize them. I think it, it is the duty of the chair to recognize them, but it's the chair's discretion uh, to recognize them at the point he's going to do that. And I believe the chair was making a comment and that the chair should then recognize I believe it was Commissioner Severson 
had a motion, but until the chair formally recognizes a member, um, there's nothing to talk about. Or, or there's not a, the, the motion at this point is a motion to adopt the main motion, a motion to call the question, which would take a two-thirds vote to cut it off as the debate would, would certainly be in order, but first a member has to obtain the floor to make that motion. The, a member can simply not just make a motion. He has to be, he or she has to be recognized first to get the floor. Thank you, Council Rice. Point of order, President Cogill. Commissioner Bourne, I am going to continue my comments and I will recognize folks in the order that their hands are raised. I would appeal the ruling on the chair. I'd like to, uh, which would require a second. Second. Okay. Well, I will appeal to Council Rice as to whether or not I can finish my comments before, before <laughs> acknowledge these. It, I think that it would be appropriate to, they've, you've made a decision to continue to speak. Uh, Commissioner Bourne has challenged your ruling. It's been a second. Um, so yes, the question should be put to the body whether or not the chair's uh, ruling that he has the floor should be upheld. But just a point of clarification in that I certainly agree with that uh, recommendation, but I was not recognized by the president to make a motion to appeal his previous ruling. So I, I think there's just something wrong in how uh, I'll, I'll go back to say, I, I respectfully think, think our parliamentarian might need to spend some time revisiting how members obtain the floor to make motions that aren't debatable and motions to close debates and motions to table. Um, but I'll certainly, the call's on my side this time. So I'll take it. Right, so there's a motion to appeal the ruling of, of the chair and the ruling of the chair is that the chair was able to speak to the actual resolution on the floor. Um, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. No. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. No. Commissioner Hassan. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Pardon me, was the last aye from Commissioner Hassan? That was Commissioner French speaking. If the I'm sorry, French. Uh, uh, Secretary uh, Ringo, that was me by mistake. Aye. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner French. I've marked you as aye. Thank Commissioner you. Forney. No. Vice President Vita. No. President Cogill. No. You have three ayes, five nays, and one absent. Thank you. That does not carry. Um, and what it does do, though, is make it very clear to me that certain commissioners on this board want to silence uh, my voice in articulating why I support this master plan, um, which is unfortunate. It's one of the larger items that has been uh, discussed, debated, thought about in the park system over the last four years. Um, it is an issue that has to do with how we think about and plan for the future of our park system during a time of climate crisis, uh, during a time of uh, immense upheaval. Um, and it's a, it's a, a plan that, uh, while imperfect, honors the history of the space and the, the history of Black Gulf at that, that site, um, while also being realistic about the fact that we have a climate emergency and intense rain events that will make it impossible to even have the history of Black Gulf in 10 or 15 years if we don't pass this plan. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, just the basic tenets of democratic debate and discussion are attempting to be silenced uh, today. The shenanigans are, are kind of um, 
they would be funny if it wasn't such an important issue. Um, but I, I just want to say I appreciate um, what Commissioner v Vita has brought forward, um, the hard work that she's put into finding a, a community balance um, and thinking about this from a, an equity perspective in, in a really um, collaborative um, and thoughtful way. Um, my goal is to have this plan, plan passed. Um, if that means that we have to wait, uh, then we have to wait. But I, I, I really want this thing to happen. I don't want it to fail. With that, I have Commissioner Bourne with his hand raised. Do I have the floor? Certainly do, Commissioner Bourne. Have I properly obtained the floor? Um, please turn on your visual. President Kogel, have I properly obtained the floor? Well, Commissioner Bourne, I, I think you have. It would be great if you turn your camera on, but I know you've had preternatural problems with the camera for. Uh, it, it is on, um, but it, so I have properly obtained the floor. Uh, I would make a motion to call the question. A motion to call the question has been made. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second to call the question. That's uh, not debatable. Um, so I will uh, ask the secretary to take the role on calling the question. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. No. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. We're holding the call to question, point of information, right? This is a vote to- um, Excuse me, to uh, Secretary Rainbow? This is a vote to call the question. Okay. Uh, um, no. Commissioner Forney. No. Vice President Vita. No. President Kogil. No. You have three eyes. Five nays, one absent. That does not carry. Commissioner Musich. Thank you, President Kogel. Um, out of respect for my colleague, Commissioner Vita, and the broader community. Uh, as the trial of Derek, Derek Chauvin is underway, uh, I move to postpone consideration of this resolution until the conclusion of that trial. Second. Uh, motion to postpone until the conclusion of the Derek Chauvin trial has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Bourne, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, and I properly obtained the floor. It is proper and good. So I'd love thank to hear. You. Thank you, President Kogil. Um, I would um, amend the motion to postpone to include the conclusion of the trial and any appeal period and the exhaustion of any appeal periods. And Second. Commissioner Bourne has moved to uh, amend the postponement to include the exhaustion of any appeal periods of the Chauvin trial. And processes. I uh, got cut off with this. processes. I'm not sure what that means. But, um, I, I mean, it, it's conceivable it could go all the way to the United States Supreme Court. And I just want us to be aware of how long we're, how long we're trying to get down the road on an issue we've been working on for six years. So I don't consider that a friendly amendment. Does it need to be considered? I, I, didn't, as make a separate? As, I didn't make it as a friendly amendment. Okay. As a separate amendment. Uh, is there a second to Commissioner Bourne's amendment? Second. The uh, motion or the, the amendment has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, 
Vice President Vita. Thank you, President Kogil. Um, I, I appreciate uh, <laughs> Commissioner Bourne's amendment to the amendment, but I mean, I don't, I'm not understanding why this is necessary, so I won't be supporting it. What I've heard from people is just that they need some time. I mean, this can, appeals, all this stuff, this could be 30 years. We don't know this. Like, I'm, I'm pretty certain that this is not what folks are asking for. So I, I just, I can't support this. It's grandstanding at its finest. And this is a really sensitive subject to me. Um, I, I don't have time for this. I like, if, if we're gonna do this, can we please move forward and do it without the white supremacy, without the grandstanding, without, um, again, just all the antics, like we're, we're trying to work here and, and do the work of the park board. Thank you, Vice President. Uh, Commissioner French. Uh, am I coming clear? I know my internet is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty spotty right now. Can you guys hear me pretty well? We can hear you right now, Commissioner French. Okay, uh, we've we've delayed. Uh, can I ask a question to uh, Secretary Rangel? How long? How many times have we delayed this vote? Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary Rangel, able to weigh in on that? Um, President Kogil, Commissioner French, thank you for that question. I don't think I can probably fully weigh in on that. I'm wondering if um, Assistant Superintendent. Schroeder might know that off the top of his head. Certainly we have delayed it once, most recently, but I would be interested if um, Superintendent Schroeder, or Assistant Superintendent Schroeder has a better memory on it at the moment. President Cogill, uh, Secretary Ringel, that would be my recollection as well. Thank you, Superintendent Schroeder, or Assistant Superintendent Schroeder. Thank you, Secretary Ringel. Commissioner French, do you have any additional comments? Yeah, my, my concern is that we're going to take a vote when it's uh, politically expedient for certain commissioners. And I, I think we need to do what's right for the community. Right now, we have a spotlight on Minneapolis. So the decisions we make as elected officials is really important. Uh, how we move through our community is really important. Uh, and so delaying this over and over again, not really, you know, keeping this project in limbo is not the best thing for uh, for this project. So. I, I think we need to. I think we need to have this vote now. We need to do it and get it over with. Let's go. It's not. A, it's not. A, I, people reached out to me and said, "What are we waiting on? Why are we delaying it?" You know, people. People have homes that they need to think about where they're going to sell or whatever. But we need to figure out how to give people some time and some grace to know what's coming up next. Let's stop delaying it in the If we're gonna, if. We're thank, thank you, Vice, or thank you, Commissioner French, uh, Commissioner Bourne. Thank you, President Kogil. Um, I, I'm not seeing any antics here, but if one were to see antics, which I am not, it would probably be behind an attempt to hide, to delay an issue that the Park Board has been working on for six years and have had, well, Assistant Superintendent Schroeder is right, this resolution has been delayed once. The conclusion of this issue has been delayed time and time and time and time again for six years. I know many of you were talking about this on the convention floor almost exactly four years ago today. And it's what I don't want to have a perception of is that we are hiding behind the trial of the century the I think we could look at any resolution that we are passing tonight and make a very similar argument to postpone. And I agree with President Cogill. This is incredibly important work. The public has been waiting long enough. Um, I I think that the uh, amendments that the plan today really addresses uh, uh, like a lot of the equity concerns that were brought up, and and they were skillfully addressed by Vice President Vita and. So I don't know how delaying passage of a resolution that does greater honor to members of the black community and black golfers is, is 
problematic or I any more problematic than the last vote we just took or the last vote. I and mean, the, uh, I'm just not seeing that it, equity is embedded to every, in every resolution that we take. And, and so if we're going to delay this one vote in this one issue for a, uh, until the trial of the century is concluded, then we may as well just close up shop and go home until the trial of the century is concluded. Like, I, I just don't really understand the logic there. So, I, 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 and I don't know what else is going to change as a result of the conclusion of the trial of the century. Um, again, if there were antics, I, I would be afraid that there would some, that there would be some people, me not being one of them, that sees this as a naked attempt to hide behind seeking justice for a murder victim at the hands of Minneapolis police. And, and people that would see it that way would think that that is absolutely disgusting. Um, so, but I just wanna conclude the business of the park board. I'm really pleased at the amendments that Commissioner Vita and Commissioner Meyer brought forward tonight. Um, and, and I think regardless of how any of us votes, this concludes the matter that we have delayed consistently over and over again for six years. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bourne. Uh, Commissioner, um, Vice President Vita, for the second time. I'm sorry, I did. I meant to take that down. Uh, Commissioner Musich for the second time to Commissioner Bourne's amendment. Thank you, President Coville, for allowing me to speak. Uh, Commissioner Bourne, if I were to withdraw my amendment, or I'm sorry, if I were to withdraw my motion, would you be willing to withdraw your amendment? I, procedurally, I don't think that can be done at this point. Okay, thank you. I, uh, the uh, amendment that we are voting on right now is Commissioner Bourne's amendment to Commissioner Musage's amendment, which would be to postpone this uh, this item until President Cogill, I would withdraw my amendment to the amendment, and then I think Commissioner Musich's okay. business is back at hand. You you would or you are? I would and am. You would and am. Very good. Name of my memoir. Uh, that will be uh, noted. It is withdrawn. Uh, we are back to Commissioner Musich's original uh, amendment to postpone uh, this item until the end of the Chauvin trial. And Commissioner Musich, you have your hand raised to your amendment. I'm going to withdraw my amendment as well. I'm sorry, my motion. Commissioner Musich has withdrawn her motion to postpone. We are back to the main Resolution at hand 2021 136. I'm not seeing any hand. Oh, I do see a hand raised. Uh, Commissioner Musich to the main motion, I think, for the second time. Thank you, President Kogel. This is, I believe, the first time speaking to the main motion for me. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this resolution. Um, I'd like to extend my gratitude to the community members and public employees that worked on the crafting of this master plan before the body for approval tonight. I'm thankful for the empathy that participants in the process have shown to each other and brought to the conversation about the future of the Hiawatha Golf Course property. Our predecessors made decisions to radically alter the function of natural systems in our city to accommodate their desired recreational needs. Even those who implemented these changes admitted there were problems with this approach as theater worth noted in his 1946 history of the parks, when he said, dredge fills on swamp, swamp land take many years to settle to a final or permanent elevation. And in fact, our experience with them leads me to doubt they will ever come to a complete standstill. His observations foreshadow what we see at the course today, land sitting below the elevation of the neighboring lake. I believe the master planning process has presented us with a holistic view of what the future of this property can be, retaining the integral elements of the most recent land use of a golf course and learning center, while embracing the wetland that was here before that use and adapting to accommodate the instability of our changing climate. Uh, 
This master plan retains and modifies recreational opportunities for the public, not just of today, but of the next seven generations as well by weaving together the needs of many competing and sometimes complementary interests with a foundation of respect for and embrace of the natural world. I'm pleased to see that it protects residential neighborhoods by reducing flash flooding within the pipe shed, that it preserves protections from groundwater intrusion provided by current pumping practices on the property, that it provides golf learning, practice, and play, that it enhances the ecological function of the landscape by increasing biodiversity through restoration of wetlands, and that it supports additional community desired recreational amenities, such as a trail that circumnavigates Lake Hiawatha and reduces litter loading from the stormwater system. Beyond the land use components of this plan, it calls upon the park board that implements it to work with the African American and indigenous communities of Minneapolis to tell a more comprehensive history of the site and the role that it has played since human settlement. Um, I'm, I'm glad to support the adoption of this plan with the amendments um, that have been adopted by my colleagues this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Musich. Is there any other discussion from commissioners? Any other discussion? One more time, I'm asking, is there any other discussion? Please raise your hand. I'm not seeing any, and I will ask the secretary to please take the roll on resolution 2021-136. Commissioner Bourne. Abstain. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Severson. No. Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Meyer. Did you not hear me again? Aye. Aye, great. Okay, Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. No. No, Commissioner Forney. I did. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Abstain. President Kogil. Aye. You have four ayes, two nays, two abstain, and one absent. Aye. Okay. Uh, I'm going to appeal to council to uh, understand whether or not that is that fails or if the abstentions mean that it it carries. Um, the, would the secretary repeat the um, vote count? Certainly. There are four ayes, two nays, two abstain, and one absent. I just, so it's four, two, and two? It's four, two, two, and one. Four, two, two, and one. I, I think the threshold for passage is six votes on, on this as amended. I will appeal the council. Is that the case? The, the, the um, requires the, if the uh, floor would yield the floor, I can point council to oh. the amendments that um that i believe brought it to a six vote threshold and then we can hear his interpretation uh, commissioner Byrne, would you state your point uh, thank thank you council um we adopted a set of amendments as a slate um one of them voting on the plan with the amendments was a board action to name a piece of park realty. Um, naming park amenities and park features under the city charter requires six affirmative votes, not two thirds, six. Um, you have advised us in the past that master plans are a compound set of resolutions where any item can be added, taken out, um, added, taken out and treated individually, but it's a compound set of resolutions. When a compound resolution is moved, it's my understanding that passage of the entire resolution requires 
the victory threshold, the highest victory threshold of any of its individual components. Am I understanding that correctly? Um, Mr. Uh, President, yes, Commissioner Bourne, what you stated uh, is accurate about the master plans. Okay, so, um, so I don't think there is, so four, four is not six. So I think the resolution fits. Um, Mr. President, is there any other advice you have before I rule or, or give you my advice? No, I, I don't know if commissioners were aware of the fact that the threshold for uh, for passage uh, shifted with that. Um, but uh, that, if, if that is your understanding as well, the threshold for passage is uh, six votes. That is that is the case. I, I would still be curious to know uh, if, if uh, without this technicality uh, on the one item uh, added this evening, the the plan would have passed. Um, okay, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll take that as two questions. On the question of the boat, um, the rule, there's two provisions in the charter that apply here tonight um, uh, on the question, and that is uh, ch chapter 6.4. Let me take this mask off. I did have a shot, and Jennifer has had one, and she's across the room. I'll put it back on uh, quickly. Um, 6.4 of the Charter B majority provides that the board ordinarily acts by simple majority of a quorum disregarding any abstentions. The board does have a majority uh, to meet tonight. The vote was four in favor, two against, two abstentions, and obviously one person absent. So ordinarily, um, and that's a key word here. The board ordinarily acts by simple majority of a quorum disregarding any abstention. So the vote in effect tonight on this motion was four to two. And ordinarily that would mean the action would pass. However, I believe Commissioner Bourne does have a appropriate point of inquiry or order. As I understood the resolution earlier tonight, a series of amendments were added, one of which was to rename the building as the Solomon Hughes Building and to have that reflected on the property. Um, there is another uh, uh, section of the charter that comes into play here, and that deals with realty. Uh, 6.2 section 6.2 F realty. Um, Supermajority required for certain actions. The board may dedicate, buy, lease, or name or rename realty with at least six affirmative votes. So I believe the question then is what is the definite realty? We did have a cause to review a similar question uh, earlier this year about what realty was. Um, we provided a, a memo to the planning department or um, Ms. Walter and I, um, and while that was a little different, um, that what I cited in that memo I think applies tonight, Black's Law Dictionary, the eighth edition, defines realty as land and anything growing on, attached to, or erected on it that cannot be removed without injury to the land also termed real property. That's from Black's Law Dictionary. And the definition of real property in that same Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, is the same as realty with the addition of this sentence. Real property can either be corporeal soil and buildings or incorporeal easements. So I believe that Commissioner Bourne, because the, the main motion was amended to include a renaming of a building, uh, would then bring um, this action under the supermajority requirement under uh, uh, Charter uh, Section 62F uh, number one. So I believe the motion failed for lack of its supermajority. Okay. Uh, I don't Point think. of inquiry, President Cogill? Yes, Commissioner Bourne. Uh, it's a point of parliamentary inquiry. Um, 
Council Rice, who has the ability to make motions to reconsider um, previously decided motions? Um, Commissioner Boren, I'd have to research that question. It, the, the general rule is the per people who voted on the prevailing side of a motion. And the prevailing uh, side is no. Uh, Commissioner Boren, I'd have to do some research on that. I, I think in the past, and I'd have to look this up, I believe it was the interpretation of those who did not vote on the, on, on the side that failed. So, and I, I, I'll need to do some research on that. Um, I think it would be any of the five pe people who did not, people other than the four who voted for the resolution tonight. But I, I, I need to do some research on that. Council Rice, is it possible to say that the uh, resolution carries sans the renaming? Absolutely. Point of order. I'm asking council. You're asking council if after the role has been taken on a complete motion, if just parts of it can be passed? Given the fact that only one tiny part of it is the part that under charter isn't allowed to be passed, I'm asking council if that's the case. I might have misunderstood, but I think council just said that the entire motion required the highest threshold, but I might have heard him wrong. I, w I wasn't asking you, Commissioner Gorman, I was asking council. Um, Mr. President, um, I believe because the motion included a renaming provision, the entire motion would have required would require six votes. So I don't believe that the entire motion passed. And I don't believe that the board could separate the rest of the motion out from that. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Rice. Uh, the resolution fails. Moving on, I will ask for a motion. Twenty one one sixty eight. Um, resolution. 221-168, um, resolution approving a cooperative agreement between the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board, and of the County Housing and Redevelopment Authority, Parker and Neighborhood Organization, and Juxtaposition Arts for the development, design, installation, ownership, and maintenance of public art at Market Square, parkland dedication as completed neighborhood park in the Minneapolis Park System. The uh, resolution has been moved. Is there a second? Second. Resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Great to see this coming forward. Uh, I'll ask the secretary to please uh, take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. Aye. President Kogil. Aye. You have seven ayes, two absent. That carries. I'll ask for a motion on resolution 2021 uh, 152, which is uh, that the board take from the table resolution 2021 152, resolution approving creation of a parkland development and easement agreement with Green development and Square Vote Development Corporation in the city of Minneapolis for application of the private land maintained for public use parkland dedication option in the Worth on the Woods proposed um, at 2800 Wyzetta Boulevard. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. 
Is there any discussion? Commissioner Bourne. Thank you, uh, President Kogel, I have properly obtained the floor. Yes, you have. Thank you. Um, I, I believe um, Assistant Superintendent Schroeder had sent out an amendment on my behalf. Assistant Superintendent Schroeder and Ringgold had sent out an amendment on my behalf. And I'm wondering, Assistant Superintendent, I don't have it in front of me, if you could um, if either the secretary or assistant superintendent could read the text of that amendment and while they're pulling it up, I'll just state this was in response to some concerns that were brought up at the last meeting about um, how as we grant more and more of these waivers to the park dedication fee and have discussions about or, uh, maintenance, we've seen firsthand how a lot of agreements tend to fall off the radar. Um, and we're really looking for a mechanism to ensure that as we as we trade these off and as we're making it a, uh, a trade off to the public good in exchange for something that we think of a, is of equal value to the public good that we are ensuring that future owners of the property know and understand that there is an obligation to maintain it. Um, and so this is some light language that would require that would direct our staff as part of the agreement to ensure that within that agreement there is a an activated financial budget annually to go towards that maintenance um it's nothing like any sort of escrow agreement but it's just an agreement that like hey this is this is the plan that we're going to use to maintain this space in in perpetuity um the, and then I also just wanted to confirm on this one, I think there was also a little bit of a misunderstanding in our last meeting. Assistant Superintendent Schroeder, this resolution authorizes you to spend staff time to go draft such an agreement that would then come back to the board and then would require a six vote threshold. Is that, is that your understanding of the intent of the agreement that brought, that, uh, the intent of the draft resolution brought forward? President Kogel and Commissioner Bourne, that's correct. Okay. Um, and does either, the, and I really apologize, does either the Secretary or Assistant Superintendent Schroeder have the text of that amendment? You've read it. Pre President Kogel, I do. I can pull it from the website unless Assistant Superintendent Schroeder wanted to read it. President Kogel and Sec Secretary Rinkle, I do have it and can read it. It adds a second resolve clause that says, resolved that the Board of Commissioners direct staff to define as a part of the Parkland Development and Easement Agreement, a method of assuring funds sufficient for the maintenance of the trail and associated amenities are available to the MPRB should the developers or subsequent property owners fail to adequately perform those tasks. I would move that as an amendment to the main motion. Uh, an amendment has been moved. Is there a second? Is there a second? second? There is a second to Commissioner Bourne's amendment. Is there any discussion regarding the amendment? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to take the rule on the amendment to resolution 2021-168. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Commissioner Musich. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. No. Vice President Vita. No. President Kogil. Aye. Commissioner Musich.
You have four eyes, two nays, three absent. I believe that carries. Uh, now to the main motion. Uh, is there any discussion on the resolution with the amendment? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll on resolution 2021-168. Commissioner Bourne. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner Severson. Aye. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. President Cogill. Aye. You have seven ayes and two absent. That carries. Uh, we have a discussion uh, item um, regarding the 20 year neighborhood park plan. It's a annual report. And I'll ask Director Wiseman to um, step forward and she can uh, provide us with that presentation. Good evening, President Cogill and commissioners. Uh, the NPP 20, 2020 annual report is the fourth uh, report of this type. It is available online at www.minneapolisparks.org backslash NPP 20. The annual report is also attached to your agenda and we will be mailing hard copies uh, to the commissioners uh, if they so uh, choose to receive the hard copies. Next slide, please. The annual report contains a lot of information, the executive summary, the ordinances, planning and implementation, and then the three areas, operations, maintenance, repairs, rehabilitation, and capital investment. Next slide. The 2020 Neighborhood Park Plan is the historic agreement between the city and the park board. It was established in 2016 and implemented in 2017. Uh, and this is the fourth year uh, that we are reporting on um, this information. Next slide, please. Our annual report contains key financial data that is in accordance uh, directly with the NPP ordinance, NPP 20 ordinance. This 2020 report covers 2019 through 2021. Next slide. There is another requirement uh, around operating costs uh, and improved efficiencies and costs related to the improvements. Increased ma maintenance will maximize the service life of park assets over time, reduce backlog of repairs and rehabilitation projects. A reduced backlog results in larger number of park assets that are consistently available to the public and some cost savings that will result from energy efficient materials. Next slide. Our property tax levy uh, for our NPP 20 maintenance, we fully expended our 2019 and 2020 amounts of 3.3 and 3.5 million respectively. Uh, we have budgeted 3.5 million in 2021, which is the same level as 2020, and we expect that we will fully uh, spend that amount on maintenance practices. Next slide, please. This outlines the service levels, uh, and you will see that all of the service levels are within the target service level range, uh, except 
for um, either at the target level or above the target level. Um, next slide, please. The capital improvement amount, we have a guaranteed minimum amount of 10.5 million. There uh, will be adjustments to that annu annual amount every five years. Uh, we are due for an adjustment to the amount from 2022 to 2026. And we are under discussions with the city uh, regarding that adjustment. Our capital improvement program, we adopt the six-year capital improvement program. And again, uh, 2016 and 2021 CIP projects that were in place prior to MPP 20 uh, continue to be honored. Um, and in 2017 through 2025, it includes allocations for neighborhood parks ranked up to 44. We do expect to be able to get through all parks uh, before the end of the NPP 20 uh, agreement of 20 years and start over again uh, with some of the higher ranked parks. One thing I'll note before we go to the next slide, you will see the $10.5 million for 2020 and 2021 have been adjusted through uh, the COVID amendment. So, as you see, 2022 through 2025 is more uh, steady. We made some um, quick adjustments to the CIP for 2020 and 2021. Next slide, please. In May, this board adopted the COVID amendment to our capital improvement program, which adjusted uh, the amounts or the allocations for 2019, 2020, and 2021 due to COVID-19. As a reminder, the stay-at-home order and social distancing requirements profoundly um, impacted our ability to do in-person community engagement. So, we, uh, so to address the issues and ensure continued work, we shifted pro projects primarily between 2020 and 2021 with some um, impacts, slight impacts to 2019. We focus 2020 on rehabilitation projects and those projects that are less community and um, engagement. And we move several large and complex projects out to 2021. Overall, the project or the budget balances were kept consistent within the program year. Uh, where 2019 and 2020 saw the increase in the rehab funds and 2021 has the commens commensurate increase to the capital investment project. So I will now turn it over to Assistant Superintendent Michael Schroeder, who will walk through the rehab and capital information. Next slide, please. Commissioners. Uh, thank you. So we, we've been through this several times before, as uh, Director Wiseman has said. So I will quickly just refresh the program goals and identify the process that we use for the rehabilitation projects. Um, we, we know that we can't get to every single park and its capital needs um, immediately. So that's where the rehabilitation program steps in to help us meet those uh, the, the safety and cold, cold and regulations that have been identified Importantly, meeting the ADA transition plan, we've been spending a significant amount of uh, resources uh, improving our buildings to make them accessible. And as, as you can read in the list, we've been addressing some of the critical failures, um, and particularly around some of the roofs. We've had some fairly expensive roof rehabilitation projects in the last several years. Um, it becomes important that we have a process. Um, we work with asset management. Um, uh, I'm, I'm planning to establish an inventory of all the assets and assess their conditions. We rank those assets and their need for rehabilitation and prioritize those considering factors, including uh, so the, the, importantly, the, 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 um, the notes, uh, the dot points are above, in, in particular, those things that are critical failures or uh, park safety limitations. Could I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> this is a, uh, a recap of the dollars that are allocated to the 2019 rehabilitation categories. 
Um, and just to, they're, they're listed on the left side of the page there. Accessibility improvements, those are the ones we carry through with the ADA. Looking at improvements to buildings and recreation center roofs, and you'll see that that is a significant expenditure with more than $1.2 million uh, budgeted and allocated in 2019. Um, the HVAC park amenities, park lighting, below grade infrastructure, sidewalk and pavements and operations facilities are all part of it leading to uh, a nearly 94, 94% uh, uh, of the budget being allocated to improvements. Um, and you can see that as we move through this, um, we have completed a significant number of projects uh, through the end of 2020. Next slide, please. So this is the 2020 rehabilitation categories and you can see that there's still significant dollars being spent on roofs and, and uh, air conditioning. Uh, HVAC systems, um, we have completed less, fewer of those projects, but we have still many projects uh, in process, um, still moving towards, um, even, even considering those ones that are still in process, uh, we have allocated 83% of the dollars uh, that were made available through the rehab program in 2020. Next slide, please. Um, so now we start to look at the 2021 rehabilitation categories. These are things, these are where we have not allocated dollars yet. Um, and in fact, I think if we look at this, we probably actually have some projects anticipated, um, but there's not nearly the amount of dollars that we have in these rehab funds as compared to previous years um, the, relative to how much we budget. So you can see that we're still in process what typically happens is we move through the year and we start to allocate dollars to specific projects that percentage goes up and by the end of the year we'll be in that um, 70 or 80 percent uh, complete or allocated uh, category some of the projects carry over from year to year and that's the reason why we uh, uh, it might be unlikely that we'll ever see a 100 percent um, of the budget being allocated in a single year next slide please So the, the, the capital investments in parks are guided, in neighborhood parks are um, uh, guided through the equity ordinance and importantly through the um, service area master plan concept plans. Um, so we allocate funds to those parks with the highest rankings, um, bringing new parks into the program every year. Next slide, please. So you can see the list of projects where we have dollars going on from 2019. We've um, allocated 62% uh, of the dollars available. And you can see that as we move uh, towards the uh, right portion of this page, uh, we have uh, any number of projects that uh, were completed or would be completed in fall of last year or that will be completed uh, this year. Um, there are some where we have been waiting for, if we look at like Painter Park, we have been waiting for uh, uh, the completion of the Southwest Service Area Master Plan. So that one is lagging a bit and will be coming forward in 2023. Next slide, please. Similarly, as we look to uh, 2020, we'll have fewer of those projects uh, um, started, we are uh, completed. We start them in, in, in the capital investment year. It usually takes us a year to a year and a half to complete them. Um, so that number at 24% uh, towards the bottom uh, will roll up significantly by the end of the year, but there will still be a bit of a carryover as we complete some things in the, in the spring of the following year. Next slide, please. And here we are at 2021. You'll note that as we sit here in April of this year, um, we are at a 0% allocation, um, but we have identified those projects that will be carried forward. Um, and you can see the the, the dollars. So so the the uh, the year completion. These projects um, are probably um, in in the process of having uh, some having uh, design project managers assigned to them. Still waiting on others, but we'll be moving through that process this year. And the next slide. That this is just. Um, continuation of the of those dollars. Uh, importantly, there's an item on the agenda for Perkins Hill Park tonight, um, where we had expected completion um, in, in the summer. That will probably push to fall of this year. I return it back to Director Weissman.
Thank you, Assistant Superintendent Schroeder, and we'll open it up for any questions. Thank you, uh, Assistant to Superintendent Schroeder, Director Wiseman, for the presentation. Um, are there questions from commissioners at the moment? Some, some positive vibes from Commissioner Forney, and uh, I'm not seeing any other hands raised. Uh, thank you uh, for the report. Um, and the progress on on MPP 20, which we love to see. Um, at this point, uh, we have one more item on the main board agenda. Do I have a motion on resolution 2021-169? So moved. Right. Resolution 2021-169 has been moved. It's a resolution resolution opening, not them, but parkways for people uh, walking, rolling, and biking, including portions of James I. Rice Parkway in the central Mississippi uh, Riverfront Regional Park and portions of Lake Harriet Parkway in the Minneapolis Chain of Lakes Regional Park through May 31st, 2021. Do I have a second? Do I have a second on the resolution? Second. I have a second. Very good. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Commissioner Bourne. Thank you, President Kogel. I, I guess I, I'm just confused by a couple of items in the resolution. Um, first, um, this is 50% of the actual piece of this resolution is taking place in my district. And I only found out about it from reading the agenda. So, so I'm just curious what, uh, I guess my first question is what, what was the uh, communication plan with the district commissioners in the, um, in the two districts where there is an impact here? Uh, Commissioner Bourne, who are you asking this question to? Um, I would ask staff, but it looks like the resolution was brought forward by you, President Kogel. So, I mean, whoever can best answer that question, if there was a communication plan and how was it executed? And I, I think that the communication plan is, is right here. We're discussing the resolution. Oh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's unusual. Um, the, the the other piece I see is I, I think assistant superintendent there's an eleven thousand dollar price tag connected to this for the rental of equipment and I'm just trying to reconcile that with the what I'll say is an astronomical price tag of when we did this last year and it kept going up and up and up is eleven thousand dollars realistic to do what we're talking about here. Uh, um, Superintendent Bangora or Assistant Superintendent Schroeder? Uh, P President Cogill and Commissioner Bourne, I, I can answer that question perhaps. Um, the, this is for a limited amount of time. This indicates that it would be through the end of May. We're also looking at some substantive changes from how we would have uh, closed the parkways last year. Um, and in addition, when we look at this, this is a quite a limited uh, section compared to the, I think we were over 21 lane miles of closure last year. This is uh, a small fraction of that. So we have uh, smaller areas and potentially more efficient ways just based on what we learned from last year of maintaining the closures. I can't tell you for certain that the $11,000 is fully correct. Um, we, we're still going through the process of figuring out how we would affect these uh, closures. The thank you, Assistant Superintendent. That um, yeah, this is still a good chunk of time through the end of May, and it's just 
I, I think I see Deputy Superintendent Ringgold's hand. Deputy Superintendent, do you have something to add? President Kogel, I can confirm that the numbers are based on direct quotes from our vendor um, and that the reason why this is lower is consistent with the remarks from Assistant Superintendent Schroeder. So this would cover those lane closures uh, for the time period specified. Thank you. Um, I, I, um, I Just a couple of last points. Um, not uncomfortable with the spirit of the resolution, but I am uncomfortable with the violation of the spirit of our board rules that specifically state that district commissioners are to be kept uh, up to date on what other commissioners are working on within their district. Um, so so that it's just amazing to me that there wasn't a phone call and just learning about the pricing structure now. Um, this just doesn't seem like how we operate. It's also, I mean, I, I don't have a resolution tonight I could um, closing Lake of the Isles Parkway. And, you know, this board has always talked about deferring to the expertise of their district commissioners. Um, so it's just kind of amazing that this was brought forward by the district four commissioner. And I, I think I'm correct in, in looking at this, if I have the map right, this only impacts two amenities outside of di the district four commissioners district and this isn't a staff recommendation so it's uh, I, i'm just having problems with the realistic quote of the price and i'm having problems with just really not being involved in a critical infrastructure decision in my district so um, i can't support this i may be looking to be properly recognized to make an amendment after um after other folks have had the opportunity to have the floor Thank you, Commissioner Bourne. Uh, I'd like to make a couple of clarifications here. Um, first, uh, there's been ongoing discussion about uh, how we use our parkways and how we make them more accessible to everybody and safer for everybody over the last, really the entire term, but, but certainly over the last year, year and a half. Um, the, the lower uh, Lake Harriet Road uh, is uh, an easy, um, one to open up for people um, and make safe. Um, it was incredibly popular last year. Um, it's easy because there aren't many entrance and egress points. Um, and the portion of the central Mississippi Riverfront um, is fully within the District Board Commissioner's um, district. Commissioner Forney. Um, thank you, President Kokel. Um, uh, just some clarification. Um, these two areas, are these areas that have been, um, uh, I don't know, what should we say, are, are, are being proposed, I guess is the word I'll use, uh, for potential gates, permanent gates that we did um, uh, vote on, I believe, in the budget um, last year. Is this um, um, those areas? Um. Yeah, yeah that, that's a good question. Um, I might be able to begin with, with that. I, I think that there are, there are others that can answer answer more as that, that process is starting, but certainly uh, West River Road is, is a candidate for, for those gates. Um, and there are actually already some gates and portions of the lower Lake Harriet Road. Yes, so. I guess I was looking to Assistant Superintendent yeah. Schroeder and then also to ask the question, um, is this also the section that um, has been proposed, um, I believe it was in the master plan, to eventually close permanently? Yeah. Assistant Superintendent Schroeder, go ahead. President, President Kogel, we have, uh, through the, the good work of uh, community uh, uh, customer service staff, uh, Shane, a stencil and Keith Bites have started to put together a map of where we could affect closures. We have not landed on a particular location where it would start, but I would suggest that this portion of West River Parkway would be a logical starting point for the ease of installation of gates and the numbers of events that we would have going on there. 
Um, where we would go from there hasn't been determined yet. Uh, you're also correct that uh, Lake Hare, the, the south, lower roads of uh, Lake Hare would be a relatively easy place to start because there already, already is an alternative route around the lake at that location. Um, and to, to Commissioner Forney's uh, point, the, the master plan for uh, Banama Costa Harriet actually identifies a different uh, configuration for what we call a lower road that would uh, provide for greater use uh, with the replacement of the road. And also just uh, another clarification, um, we're only proposing these particular two sections and it's only through May 31st and more particularly, I don't think it says it anywhere, in response to uh, relief due to um, COVID. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner uh, Meyer. Um, I'll just speak to a couple of the reasons uh, why I support the resolution. Um, the first one is, as Commissioner Forney said, this provides um, pandemic relief. Um, we are seeing a spike in cases, um, even though, you know, vaccines are rolling out. That's also um, making people, um, you know, do less social distancing. So cases are, are spiking. So I, I think it's still good um, for us to provide um, some extra space um, for people um, who need it, you know, um, older people or immune compromised people um, who still can't go to the gyms um, for, for them to have um, some, you know, extra space that um, is wide enough for them to be safely distanced from people. I don't think we need to do it for the entire system. So just in response to one of the commenters at open time today, like, who's concerned that we would do this for the entire system. I don't think that's um, necessary. Um, or, or a good idea at this point, also considering how much money that would cost to do. But I do think it would make sense uh, for us to do a couple areas. Uh, these are the two probably most cost effective areas. Um, if we were to do it at Lake of the Isles, Lake of the Isles is a much more expensive one because um, you have to have the cones in the middle. Um, I would not support an amendment uh, at that one. Um, but this gives us uh, two spaces and another advantage um, as you know, uh, Commissioner Forney's uh, line of questioning for this um, is that these two locations are um, pretty likely candidates um, for the, the gate allocation. And um, this would give us some opportunity to do um, some engagement around that um, to show people you know, what it um, could be like um, and to talk to people as they're using it. So I, I would support this as is, uh, but I wouldn't want to add um, additional ones to it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Commissioner Bourne for the second time. Thank you, President Cogill. Um, Superintendent Bangora, why was this not a staff recommendation? I, I see that it's silent on whether or not it's a staff recommendation. Commissioner Bourne, President Cogill, uh, why was it not a staff recommendation? Right, like 99% of our resolutions come through with a staff recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, this one does not, and I'm just curious why. And um, I'd like to hear staff's, I'd like to hear staff's recommendation on it. Um, Commissioner Bourne, um, this was just, uh, we are working towards as we've talked about before, sort of an idea around um, permit structures across the organization or across different places around our system. This was something that was just um, brought forward as, a, as an opportunity right now. And we, at this point, just looked at it as something that was um, not complicated, as was said by Commissioner, um, Commissioner uh, Meyer and also um, President Hogill around the fact that this is not something that's complicated for us to do. And so we just took this as, as something that was an opportunity and it was just brought forward as a resolution. So it wasn't something that we at the time said, this is something we're moving towards. We were working on opportunities across the organization or our parkways around what we could put for infrastructure. And this was just an opportunity that we just uh, understood and it wasn't complicated for us as staff to uh, respond to what would be um, you know, not, not something that would be difficult for us to accomplish. Thank, thank you, Superintendent. Um, then 
if I'm hearing that it's not complicated and there's a path of little resistance here, why was there not a staff recommendation when 99% of the resolutions come forward to have a staff recommendation attached to them? Um, Commissioner Bourne, I'm not sure uh, why it wasn't. It was just, and again, I, I don't know how to answer that question in particular. Um, it just was, again, um, a uh, it was brought forward. Um, we just gave a uh, response to what we could do and that the complication or the the um, execution of this would not be complicated for staff to do. Um, but we didn't, it, you know, again, it wasn't um, something that the staff brought forward immediately or said this was a possibility. It was just an opportunity for us to look at something that was brought forward. And we, uh, again, said that we could execute this. And so that's where it was. I'm not sure uh, if I'm answering your question, but I, we... No, I, th I, about. I, I think you are. And I, and I think I heard you say something else that staff is currently working on a comprehensive thoughtful plan on how to address temporary to permanent road closures in a in an Correct. equitable way and Correct. I, yes I and that right. was the adoption of the board you know from the budget and looking at infrastructure and possibilities to where we could uh, do this and these areas are potentially those places that we can do that but when staff is done with that thoughtful plan that you're working diligently to conclude, staff will have recommendations at that point, correct? Yes, based on the approval of the budget for uh, infrastructure and placing them across our park system, our roadways, yes, we would have a plan to go forward and bring to the board. Th thank you, Superintendent. I mean, I mean, that's that's what I really needed to hear. I mean, we, we talk about giving staff the space and respect to do the professional work that they are hired to do. We allocated funding in the budget for them to carry out a um, a series of actions that might very well be similar to this in, in a very quick manner. And I can't imagine with Superintendent Bangora and Assistant Superintendent Schroeder working diligently on this, I can't imagine that we're more than like a cycle away from staff recommendations. And as a district commissioner in an impacted area, I certainly would love the opportunity to talk through the benefits and pitfalls with staff of, of an action or a recommendation like this. I've not had the opportunity to do so. Um, so I, I can't support this resolution tonight. If it were to come back up through committee with staff recommendations, I'd be happy to support that. And I think we can still get that done in a very timely manner. So I, I can't support it tonight just for the Again, the circumvention of at least one of the two district commissioners and, and what, what really appears, I think the superintendent's being diplomatic about it, a circumvention of staff to have the ability to work and, and work and do the professional work that we're paying them to do. So I, I just, I appreciate the intent of this resolution, but I can't support it tonight. I hope that the motion maker would work with the affected district commissioners and bring something up next cycle with, um, with staff recommendations instead of just kind of going rogue. Commissioner Severson. Uh, thank you, President Cogill. Um, I, I just have a question uh, to Superintendent Bangora uh, or maybe um, President Cogill or maybe Brian can, um, maybe all three, I don't know. Could this be viewed as discriminatory to disabled people who can't walk or our seniors who choose to enjoy our parkways by driving on them um, uh, for their enjoyment and the possibility or the re likely reality is that they will no longer be able to drive on them uh, to enjoy them. I'll start with you, President Cogill, then we can go to Superintendent oh. Bangora. Yeah, we have everybody answer this question. I, I think the opposite is the case. Uh, Commissioner Severson, it's pretty um, well known that um, vehicle uh, crashes or uh, safety issues associated with streets uh, are go down to essentially zero when there aren't cars on those streets. Um, so when there are no vehicles in a certain area of a uh, Parkway, uh, it's far less likely, in fact, just about 0% likelihood that any individual, whether they are um, differently abled uh, or whatever their ability level is, uh, to be hurt or injured by a vehicle or a vehicle related crash. 
Um, I also say that uh, a good proportion of folks that are differently abled aren't able to drive in the first place. And in fact, by adding additional space, um, we're creating more ADA accessibility around our park spaces and some of the most um, well-developed um, and well-used park spaces in the system. Um, in fact, you know, the ADA transition plan as stipulated by the federal government um, recommends a substantially more space for people who are uh, in wheelchairs or who are um, have low vision um, to be able to walk and navigate public spaces. So, um, I mean, I think to your question, I mean, anything can be viewed by any perspective, but um, I think that the evidence and practices and um, guidance from all levels of government would suggest that um, having fewer vehicles in spaces is safer for everybody, especially the most vulnerable of our community. That's an interesting opinion. I think I was looking more asking the question, is it discriminatory by those who can't walk, um, but instead choose to drive to enjoy our parkways? Superintendent Bangor, what's your opinion on this? Um, Commissioner Stevenson, President Kogil, um, since probably the early, probably 1960s or even sooner, um, there have been many places across the country, um, and I have like extensive reports around this, around what we know to be called open streets or um, places where they actually open up roadways to people and pedestrians across the country. Um, there is um, many, many examples of that. And in fact, I think even around the world in different places, even in Europe and but of course United States Central Park and places across the country where they open up streets for people and pedestrians. Um, there's many, there's many, many different type of um, uh, research around that and what it means and what it means for people. Um, I can't specifically say that whether someone feels discriminated like if they want to be able to access those spaces. But what I do know is that um, places and spaces where people can uh, interact and to have places where they can enjoy parkways and streets that are actually made for people um, and not just vehicles um, is, you know, research to death. And I think that the health of a city and the and the health of people um, has been documented with open streets or what they call closed parkways or closed streets. Um, I don't know in particular um, specifically what someone feels if they can't drive a parkway uh, that they normally drive during a period of time that they close a parkway um, for enjoyment or just for safety or for in a pandemic that we have done within this organization. Um, my purpose is, again, to make sure that we have um, places that, uh, whether they can park in a parking lot that's close to the location, but I would do everything on my part to make sure that folks that have concerns about that, we would hear it and we would adjust accordingly to make sure that we have opportunities for all folks to go and experience uh, a closed parkway. Um, but again, I don't, I, I'm not, I can't answer where someone feels discriminated against or um, and how they feel, but I would absolutely hear any comments from anyone in the community, which we've had received before about access to parkways. Okay, open streets are typically for one day that, from my experience here in Minneapolis, but I, I don't know other parts of the world, I guess. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's quite interesting to me that I receive plenty of phone calls um, from senior citizens and disabled folks uh, about this very matter and how they feel uh, left out and how they don't feel a part of this. And, you know, our roadways, in my earnest opinion, are for cars. Um, and, and we're going to create confusion uh, between residents and our cars that are going to create more crashes, in my earnest opinion. Um, I, if we need more space for people to walk, then let's address the real issue there and let's start putting larger pathways on, on more green space so there's more room for people to walk. Uh, Council Rice, is this, this uh, is, could this be discriminatory? Could we be sued for something like this? Um, we are Mr. President, uh, Commissioner Severson. Um, I, I think I'd have to defer on this question from a legal point of view. I think the superintendent and the president articulated the points on why it's allowed. I, I would have to look into it, uh, Commissioner. 
uh, Severson to give you any kind of definitive question. Um, I think this, the way the superintendent articulated the question was uh, w- was pretty accurate about the trade-offs. Um, I, I think so. I, yeah, I, I, it would take some research. So I'd, I'd ask that I could take that under advisement. Again, I, I'm concerned that we are possibly discriminating against uh, folks who use that, that space um, uh, for their enjoyment, uh, whether it's in a car or a bicycle or walking. Um, and I, I think we're making a huge mistake by creating um, confusion uh, around this space. I've also done some research on, uh, you know, where funds come from to build our roads? Do we get federal dollars? Are they supposed to remain roads for cars? I'm still trying to find all this information. I hope I'll have more time uh, in the coming months to do more research. But I, I really wish we would go away from this and start focusing on the real problem. If we need more sp- space for people to bike, roller bait, walk, then let's address the real issue and stop taking streets and let's start building more pathways along our parks. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Okay, so responding to Commissioner Severson, I would ask first, uh, is it discrimination against me that I can't walk on a highway? Like um, most states have laws against, you know, pedestrians on interstates. Should I file a discrimination suit? Um, You know, the Hiawatha Golf Course has a fence around it. Um, You know, I'm not supposed to walk in there while golf is in season. Uh, So is it, discrimination against me that I don't have access to that golf course uh, because I'm not a golfer. Like it's really an absurd line of argument. Uh, If there are particular uh, paths that Commissioner Severson feels that we should put in our green space in the long term, you know, I'm very interested in having that conversation. He's welcome to talk to me as, you know, chair of the planning committee. Maybe we can bring something forward to make the improvements that he wants. But we have a short-term issue uh, with the pandemic here that this resolution is in response to. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meyer. Um, uh, I'll note that Commissioner Bourne has spoken twice on this issue, and I will now. Uh, Commissioner Cogill, I have not. I've spoken once. Uh, I'll I'll appeal that. I believe you have spoken twice on this issue, uh, Secretary. Uh, I think the secretary could probably verify if I've spoken once or twice. I believe it was only once, um, but it was broken by several questions. So that might be where the confusion is. Thank you, Secretary Ringgold. Go ahead, Commissioner Bourne. Thank you, uh, President Cogill. But also, I, I think Commissioner Meyer directed a directed a series of questions directly to Commissioner Severson. I think it would be appropriate to allow him to respond at all. He didn't say those questions were rhetorical. He addressed them directly to Commissioner Severson and it would be appropriate to allow him to respond before me going into my second time. Commissioner Bourne, that was your second time. You can continue. I, I will start my second time now after that parliamentary inquiry. Uh, I guess my, my question is, um, uh, Superintendent Bangora or, uh, or President Cogill, th- there's been a lot of assertions of what's good for different groups of people um, that without, that we may not be part of. Um, and uh, Minneapolis does have an advisory committee on people with disabilities. Uh, And and I'm wondering if this resolution, Superintendent or President Cogill was ran by the the Minneapolis Advisory on Committee of People with Disabilities. Uh, My other question is the, are are there any ADA compliant um, handicap parking spaces that that will be inaccessible after, uh, after the passage of this action? Um, and I think that is, I think those are my two questions that I just like a response to. The answer to both of your questions is no. Um, there is still access along uh, West River Road, um, as there will continue to be. I, I'd be looking for an answer from staff on where the ADA compliant 
handicapped parking spaces are in the district and whether or not access will be cut off. Um, if you're the author of the resolution, I think it would be a, appropriate for you to respond to the question about whether or not this has been brought to the Minneapolis Advisory Committee on People with Disabilities. Thanks, uh, Brad. The, the answer to both your questions is Commissioner Bourne. The answer to both of your questions is no. The, uh, thank you, President Cogill. Um, the, you know, we've often talked about a for us, for us, by us, not without us mentality in our decision making. And, and I'm just really, I think there's a way to get here. And I, I'm not disagreeing with President Kogel's assertions, but it feels like they're assertions. And I really want staff to do the work that they're paid for. Uh, members of our staff, I'm pretty confident, have a relationship with the Minneapolis Advisory Committee on People with Disabilities. It's a simple ask. And, and again, this is for us, by us, not without us mentality of decision making that I think we should that I think we all subscribe to. So. I, I can't support this tonight, just knowing that the basic groundworks of this haven't been done. I, I may very well, once that's done, be supportive of the full resolution, but we, we just can't shoot from the hip and go rogue like this in meetings. Thank you, Commissioner Bourne. Are there any other hands raised? I'm not seeing any other hands. Any other hands? Seeing none, I'll ask the secretary to please take the roll. Commissioner Bourne. No. Commissioner Musich. Commissioner Musich. Commissioner Severson. No. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner French. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Vice President Vita. President Kogil. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Commissioner Hassan. Vice President Vita. You have four ayes, two nays, three absent. That carries. I will now um, will now move into petitions and communications. Commissioner Bourne. Uh, thank you, President Cogill. Um, just a couple of things. I, I'm really disappointed in the um, in the able supremacist mentality of we're doing this for other groups of people without including them. Um, it, it's an incredibly easy thing to do to reach out to the Minneapolis uh, Committee on um, People with Disabilities. And it's just very disheartening that we would not do such a thing for and then almost like in a missionary style attitude, say this is what's good for them. Um, so, so I just hope that we would take that as a learning lesson for a resolution that I think probably seven, eight, nine commissioners could have probably gotten behind, um, but not at the expense of just speaking for other groups. Um, I'm also really disappointed that, um, you know, after six years of, of hard work on the Hiawatha master plan by staff and and all nine commissioners that it something couldn't cross the finish line that we all that we all believed in um i do think that there are some urgent matters for um manually and mechanically cleaning up the uh storm drainage issues into um into the lake and i think as we start on a new master plan um 
there might be some some iterations that we can that the board can take action on swiftly to address um, some of the issues there. But um, again, it was just really really unfortunate that after six years, we just couldn't get something across the finish line that enough of us believed in. Commissioner Severson. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's quite disappointing that um, we couldn't reach out to those that may be affected by these, these um, parkway closures. Uh, I, I really hope that the progressives that are out there listening to our board meetings are have these conversations while the elections are coming up or are understanding that some of our colleagues are not so progressive um, because progressive people include all um, and they don't leave people out and Tonight was another prime example of, of leaving uh, people out. And um, I, it, it just, it, it's really disappointing. And, and we're used to it on the North side. We're, we're, we're very used to it. Um, uh, but I, I hope that uh, when the elections come, uh, folks will choose to make some decisions and go in different directions um, because uh, we need to make sure that we're being inclusive and in doing our due diligence and tonight. I, I don't feel we did that and I'm clearly disappointed by it. Thank you. Commissioner Meyer. Yes. Um, Commissioner French, I'm seeing Commissioner French, Commissioner Musich. Thank you, President Cogill. Um, disappointment must be the theme du jour this evening uh, because I too am feeling disappointed uh, and I'm shocked to hear that any, any of my colleagues would think that we should be expending additional taxpayer money trying to come up with a master plan for this site, uh, considering the fact that we spent time, a lot of time and energy and money trying to come up with a plan that met as many needs as possible. And I don't know how, I don't know how we get people to bother to participate in another plan when the commissioners don't take the recommendations that are brought forward to us. Uh, it's, it's devastating to me that we will not be finding a way to preserve golf at that location that we will not be finding a way to work with water, that we will not be finding a way to increase access, that we will not be acknowledging the legacy of Solomon Hughes. I would like staff to help us understand what the next steps are moving forward without adopted master plan, I believe we told the DNR we would have one by this point. Um, and since we do not, do we now need to apply for a permit to continue pumping at the at current levels or what happens next now that we chose to do nothing? That, that's what I would like to understand. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry to my constituents that I was unable to carry this one over the finish line for you. Um, I had hoped for a better outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Musich. Commissioner Forney. Thank you. I too am very disappointed in what's occurred today or tonight. I would very much appreciate a tutorial, I guess is probably the best thing to, to ask for um, from our parliamentarian on the use of abstentions has been used over and over and over again by certain people. And to me, it's a complete and absolute abdication of your oath of office. The words that were came out this evening are so contradictory and so irresponsible to our community. Once again, I hope that we can get a tutorial on the use of abstention. It has been overused and is a, I am just so disgusted. 
Thank you, Commissioner Forney. Um, uh, Vice President Vita. Thank you, President Cogill. Um, first, I'm sorry for whatever vote I missed just a bit ago. It was taking forever and I had to take a break. So I'm really sorry about missing that vote. Um, secondly, I just want to say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm apologetic to Mr. Solomon Hughes's daughter who has been, I, I found out just recently that she had been working for years trying to get the clubhouse uh, changed in, to be in honor of her father. And so it meant a great deal to me to bring that amendment forward tonight. And then just, you know, I've really had a lot of engagement with the black community around these amendments that were brought forward. And I'm just sad that that this happened and that, you know, folks really got behind this. And we got to a point where we, we couldn't even table, but we had to, you know, make the vote and it didn't go in our favor. So that's it for me. Oh, the last thing is, um, you know, it's getting warm out. Folks are out enjoying the parks, park spaces walking more, being a lot more active. I'm, I'm thrilled with what our staff has put together um, with the restrictions that we still have due to COVID. And I'm excited to see more folks out enjoying the park space. Thank you, Vice President Vita. Um, apologies to all commissioners this evening who are frustrated in, in a variety of ways. Um, hope to work with you all in passing uh, resolutions that, that we can get behind. Um, it's uh, certainly unfortunate that a commissioner who has been on the board for the entire time that we've been discussing the Hiawatha Golf Course just doesn't even have an opinion about it at the end of the day when we were voting on it. Um, and I'm hopeful that uh, all the commissioners, especially our most senior member, will be part of a a solution uh, moving forward since uh, what uh, failed um, this evening um, we'll need to be um, we need to be thinking about what what we're going to do in its place um, because there's work that needs to be done and it has to happen so um, more to come on that soon um, I appreciate commissioners uh, recognizing that we don't need to exhaust our communities to do what's right for uh, opening up some additional roadway space for people. It's not very much. It's not for a very long time. Um, it's not particularly uh, concerning or uh, a big issue. So I, I appreciate the support. And um, I, I think that uh, it's important to, um, to be responsive in a, in a time where, where things are a bit odd still. Um, I'm very hopeful that we're moving towards a time where um, where we in our communities feel a little bit more on even, uh, even playing field, even keel, uh, and know what to expect, uh, moving into the future. And I really thank our park staff for giving people that sense of, um, solidity, I guess, with our programs, with our park spaces, with spaces that people can feel safe and feel, um, rejuvenated. Um, the amazing work that park staff has done to respond to, the really um, important uh, calls from commissioners around um, getting uh, youth violence prevention initiatives started throughout the, the system. I'm hopeful to see a presentation on our progress there uh, at a future meeting. And I'm looking forward to Chair French and Vice Chair Severson um, providing us some updates um, through the Recreation Committee um, because that work has been going on pretty, pretty fantastically and um, it's, it's the, the lifeblood of what we do. Um, thank you all, and I will now um, close the regular meeting of the Park Board and turn it over to Chair, um, Chair Vita for the Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee. The time being 8.15 p.m., I'd like to call the call to order the Legislative and Intergovernmental um, Committee. Will the Secretary Commissioner please Meyer. take the roll? Thank you, Secretary. Thank you. Here. Commissioner uh, Meyer. Here. Here. Commissioner Hassan. 
Commissioner Forney. Here. Chair Vita. Present. You have a quorum. I'd ask for a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. So moved. Will the secretary please take the roll on approval of agenda? Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. You have three ayes, one absent. I would ask for a motion, for, that motion carries. I'd ask for a motion for approval of the minutes from Wednesday, January 6, 2021. So Will the secretary please take the roll on approval of the minutes? Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. You have three ayes, one absent. We have a few action items. Would anyone like to assist in? I'd like to move resolution 2021-170, a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board and the City of Golden Valley regarding cooperation and collaboration to resolve issues in portions of Uterworth Regional Park. The res oh, uh, there is discussion, Commissioner Meyer. I was going to ask for a presentation about this. I'd like to know the background of it. Sure, can we please have a presentation? Chair Vita, of course, we can do that. Um, and I, I will note that um, th there is a slight modification to the agreement to focus directly on the shore of, of shoreline of Twin Lake. Um, and that was distributed, I believe, yesterday. So if you can go to the next slide, please. This is this will be just all words, and I'll go through it fairly quickly and then allow people to ask questions. So um, th we were made aware, um, and I think commissioners know this, of certain activities happening within Worth Park and within the corporate limits of the city of Golden Valley um, for those um, impacting uh, ostensibly the quality of life of those residents who are living near, near the park. Um, and we understand those kinds of activities have occurred within Worth Park from time to time over the last several decades. We met. We have met actually with the with city staff and actually some of the elected uh, representatives of the city of Golden Valley uh, several times, with the goal of trying to create a method to collaborate to resolve issues that are from time to time raised by either party. So that's the purpose that we have in this memorandum. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? The key parameters is it's really about a process of coordination, allowing us to track projects and initiatives of common interest. And we would do that through a, a, a series of meeting types, leadership meetings, which would allow um, at least two representatives of each um, governing body to come together with leadership from staff to discuss issues, coordination meetings where staff is meeting, and project meetings and project agreements where we actually identify a project to pursue where uh, staff would, would be uh, working to resolve those issues with direction coming from uh, the, the, the respective leaders within the organization. The project agreements um, have several, several uh, components to them, um, identifying essentially what's to be delivered and, and trying to be specific and measurable re relative to the actions that, will, um, that might come out of that. Next slide, please. So I, I mentioned already that there would be leadership meetings involving the elected leadership, the city manager from Golden Valley and the superintendent and others that they might designate. And this would be to review and identify issues at a very high level. Um, at least quarterly, we'd be having coordination meetings where uh, the, the superintendent, the city manager and their staffs would come together to look at the pr progress related to project level agreements and then to make determinations about how we're going to move forward with sep separate priorities. And then project meetings are those ones that are focused of staff from both organizations working together on a specific and identified project level effort. Next slide, please. 
So the the project level agreements would 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 stem from this. Right now, there are two that are being considered. One that would consider the uh, activities and some of the resolution to those issues that have been identified on the shoreline of Twin Lake. Um, and a second would be um, identifying processes related to response to 911 uh, calls. There's there's different uh, reporting uh, dispatch. Uh, I, I don't know all, all the exact terms, but when somebody from Golden Valley calls, they're not immediately connected to our park police dispatch um, they're re because there's two different dispatch centers that are operating somewhat independently. So the, the projects would look at, at these kinds of things and those project level agreements would be brought to the board um, depending upon whether they're a public facing action. The, the first one that I mentioned dealing with the shoreline of Twin Lake, we would uh, bring forward eventually um, because it likely involves an amendment to the master plan for the Fort Worth Park. Next slide, please. So other things to consider, there are no property rights that are extended by this MOU. Um, that it means that the, we continue to control and direct the activities and manage the activities within Worth Park. Um, the MOU is to be reviewed annually um, through concurrent actions by the city and the park board. And importantly, this is not a legally binding agreement. MOUs are not that kind of an instrument. And I think that would be the last slide. If you just go to the next one, I think it's for questions. Thank you, Assistant Superintendent Schroeder. Um, I think Commissioner Forney had her hand raised. Commissioner Forney, you have a question? Um, yes. Um, <laughs> thank you. You did mention policing, and I know that there was issue last summer um, where we had to, we did change up some of our um, regulations. And is this a part of some of the, um, what should we say? The memorandum that will be discussed and looking at you know whose jurisdiction and whose ordinances and stuff like that um, are superseding. Um, a chair uh, Vita and Commissioner Forney, um, I'll speak to this a little bit, but I'll also ask Council Rice and Superintendent Bangora. Um, the, the hard part here is that we do have our own ordinances, which are in effect within our properties. And there are ordinances of the city of Golden Valley, which are in effect on their properties. The 911 response provides a, a methodology for um, the response to those calls and who would have jurisdiction once the appropriate authorities arrive. Um, from the park board side, we would see that as an administrative policy. It's essentially directing our park police how they should be acting when, when there's something going on at the park. Importantly, it does, it, it, it gets into several areas, some of which you mentioned, some of which you didn't like emergency responses. If there's a, an issue of life or safety out there, um, parties from both the park board and the city of Golden Valley would be responding. And they will determine who's in charge once they actually get there and see what the issues are. Um, the, 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 uh, the, the technicalities around the 911 response um, we don't actually have a final ag agreement around that yet. It's it's been reviewed by the by the police chiefs of both organizations, and I believe our legal counsel is still reviewing it. But I think it's our intention that from our side, that would be an administrative policy and not something that would be brought to the board because it's simply telling our police, setting up a methodology for our police to be responding relative to things within the corporate limits of Golden Valley. And maybe I, I should allow Council Rice or Superintendent Pangora to weigh in on that question as well. Yeah, Chair, uh, Chair Vitao, Commissioner uh, Forney. Michael kind of explained it well, um, and I think he articulated well. I think that we are currently both uh, Chief Ohado and Chief Sturgis are working through um, those response calls and how um, you know, how it administratively, how it's going to be dealt with when we do have a call over uh, at, at the beach area or within the um, area of the park. Um, so they're working through that now. And, um, and I think they're coming along really well with an understanding of how to uh, respond and work through these things. And so um, at this point, I think that um, 
We're letting the chiefs, both chiefs work through it administratively. Once they bring it forward, Council Rice will uh, take a look at it. And from there, we can then really establish a good working relationship, both with the uh, City of Golden Valley and, and, and Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. And uh, as far as how we respond to um, any concerns around um, uh, the section of Theater Worth, and particularly the beach area. Council Rice, if you have anything to add. Um, um, Madam uh, Chair Vito and Commissioner Forney, um, just a quick, we have, th this is uh, park board land we're talking about under uh, state law and the city charter. We have the right to uh, have our ordinance effective and also to police it since it is our land. The land is also in the city of Golden Valley. So for years we've considered that there is concurrent jurisdiction between both the park board and Golden Valley uh, with respect to uh, regulatory matters and particularly with um, you know, criminal matters. Um, we have our set of ordinances, they have theirs. There is a state law in place which uh, both parties, police departments work with. Um, both agencies have responsibilities in general under state law that if a citizen or any person calls 911, they need to get a response. The complication for the Minneapolis side is that in, if, a, if you make a 911 call, in that geographic area, I think Mr. Shorter put in the memo, the large majority of that park, Worth Park is in the city of Golden Valley, the 911 calls goes to their dispatch system, not ours. And that's where the two chiefs are trying to work out how to handle calls. And particularly, as you know, Commissioner Forney, our police department is not a 24 seven department. Um, Golden Valley, I believe, does have a responsibility with their, they have 30 plus police officers uh, in a city with 20,000 people and uh, probably a city with about uh, 10 square miles. We have uh, 30 police officers with 420,000 people in a jurisdiction with probably close to 60 square miles. So it becomes a matter of allocation of resources and how to best respond to that. I do understand the two chiefs have been working out a protocol system about how calls could be answered. Um, there is a legal obligation by both departments to respond to um, calls for help. And if it needs to come before the board, it will. Thank you all. I just, you know, I appreciate that we have this resolution coming forward. We have an amazingly good neighbor in Golden Valley and anything that we can strengthen, you know, what our obligations are and, and communication. I, I really appreciate it. And, and it was unfortunate what happened last summer and I'm glad that you know we're moving forward with this. So thank you very much for moving this. Thank you, Commissioner Forney. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you. Um, are there any other examples of this type of thing to look at? I mean, we have land that's owned by the park board, but sits in other, a lot of other cities uh, do we have any kind of other agreements or is this like the first of its kind that we're looking at here? Chair Vita and Commissioner Meyer, I, I, I can, uh, Council Rice may know of others. The one I would point to would be a joint powers agreement, which is uh, a little bit different that we have for uh, the lands out at the upper post at Fort Snelling. I'm not aware that we have similar kind of arrangements with any of the other cities where we uh, exist on an extraterritorial basis. Specifically like the, the quarterly meeting things, I'm kind of stuck on that one because it just seems like a lot to me. Um, like with the, with the school board, we have a joint meeting with them once a year and there's just a lot more land and, and you know, other things that affect both of us. And it, it just seems to me like we're um, dedicating an awful lot to Golden Valley. And um, I'm, I'm just concerned um, because of how, how this came about um, with Golden Valley neighbors complaining about the toplessness, which we you know responded to by passing our ordinance <laughs> to allow it. And um, I, I don't know, I, I don't really feel comfortable voting for this tonight. I, I think you know we should be having meetings you know, between our executives as needed, but for us to bind this, uh, to, to require 
these quarterly meetings indefinitely, um, I think puts a lot of burden on our staff and I, I think uh, we shouldn't do that. If, if I could respond to Commissioner Meyer, I think uh, Mr. Schroeder uh, properly in the memo outlined situations that we've had with Golden Valley involving uh, Glenwood Terrace Park. We've worked with them on um, water issues that they've had um, where we allow them uh, one of their uh, water systems to be on uh, the Worth um, Project Park. Um, I think there was some talk about working with them with a dog park. Um, and this most recent one with the beach. Um, we certainly work with them to resolve issues as they've come up. I think the only, as Mr. Schroeder indicated, the only other uh, uh, jurisdictional one that I'm aware of is Fort Snelling. Fort Snelling's a bit unusual because it's a uh, unorganized territory in the county and really the only official governing entity on um, Fort Snelling is not a city it's an unorganized territory, and as such, the county is kind of the de facto government uh, authority in that area. So it, it probably needs, um, but it, Golden Valley also, we also have a large land holding in, in Golden Valley, more so than other uh, cities. Although we do have holdings in St. Anthony, um, St. Louis Park, part of Hopkins, and, um, Robbinsdale certainly with uh, Victory Memorial Drive. Most of that is in Robbinsdale. We don't have a formal agreement like that with any other city though. To answer Commissioner Meyer's question. Thank you, Council Rice. Any further discussion? Will the secretary please take the roll on resolution 2021-170. Commissioner Meyer. No. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. You have two ayes, one nay, one abstain, or sorry, one absent. That resolution carries. Um, would someone like to? I'll move resolution 2021-171, resolution approving the 2021 federal legislative agenda of the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. Any discussion? Commissioner Meyer. Uh, never mind, mine's for the next one. I'll wait for the next one. Thank you. So no discussion. Will the secretary please take the roll on 2021-170, resolution 2021-171, please. Commissioner Meyer. Aye. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. You have three ayes, one absent. That resolution carries. I'll move resolution 2021-172 resolution approving a one-year contract effective April 22nd, 2021 with Primacy Strategy Group in the amount not to exceed $10,000 for lobbyist services. Commissioner Meyer. Thank you. Um, can I ask staff, like, wh where does this money come from? Where, where would the money like otherwise be if it um, wasn't allocated? or if we don't approve this. Chair Vita and um, Commissioner Meyer, there was a line item of $10,000 uh, in the superintendent's budget for this uh, kind of work, federal assistance. In my apology, I was trying to log in and get there. So thank you, Pamela. Okay. Um, Right. Uh, so I'm going to probably be, I'm, I'm going to vote against this because I feel like we have, you know, increased our, um, the, the, the amount of money that we allocate uh, to interacting with other governments by quite a substantial amount. Um, first by um, hiring, you know, a full-time IGR administrator and, and second 
um, with the grant writer. I, you know, um, support uh, the agenda that we just passed through committee um, on the federal level. But I feel like the way that we can um, help further that agenda, you know, is primarily um, through working with our delegation in Minnesota. I don't feel that we have to have um, an additional person in, in DC uh, for that. Um, uh, so I'll be uh, voting against this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mario. Commissioner Forney. Yes, I support this. Um, I was very um, upset that we, um, what should we say, canceled the uh, contract that we had with the prior uh, federal um, lobbyists. Um, and I think, you know, particularly with the very, very exciting things that are happening on the federal level, you know, um, the, the infrastructure, you know, um, bill and, and everything. I just think it, it is so opportune. We are so teed up to be there for um, uh, that type of funding. And uh, I, I think it's so critical and, and just so exciting, the opportunity. So um, I am wholeheartedly behind this. Chair Vita, may I, I um, say a word just about that? Please. Yes. Okay. So yes, I think just picking up on what um, Commissioner Forney just said, I think with the confluence of the new Biden administration and the change in the Senate leadership, as well as the economic impacts of COVID, it's kind of created an unprecedented opportunity uh, at the federal level to engage with Congress and administration. And I think it's also a unique time and a small, potentially a small window because we have the 2022 election cycles coming, um, which I think will influence the, the speed and the breadth of the federal legislative efforts that are ongoing. And uh, Emily Tranter with the Primacy Strategy Group has done work with the Park Board in the past, so she's up to speed on our organization. She has really good connections and relationships with the Minnesota delegation. And um, I think, you know, I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, it's, it's only 10,000, so it's not going to be a robust um, amount of time she can put in, but she could, I think, you know, give us heads up on new funding opportunities that we may not be aware of and point us in the right direction on who we should speak to, um, to see if, you know, there's some opportunities for us. So thank you. Thank you. I just want to add that I've appreciated the time staff has spent explaining to me what this $10,000 has the potential to do for the organization. I'm extremely supportive. I think as um, Pamela said, this is a time to at least try. So again, thanks so much for all the time and the information you've provided uh, to put me at ease on what this $10,000 could do for the organization. I am definitely uh, in support of this and looking forward to new opportunities. Any further discussion? Will the secretary please take the role in resolution 2021-72? Commissioner Meyer. No. Commissioner Hassan. Commissioner Forney. Aye. Vice President Vita. Aye. You have two ayes, one nay, and one absent. That resolution carries and I will adjourn the intergovernmental, the legislative and intergovernmental committee meeting. Time being 8.39 p.m., I call to order the planning committee. Secretary, please call the roll. Vice President Vita. Aye. Here. Commissioner Musich. I'm present, but I can't get my video started again. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll keep okay. working on it. Uh, Commissioner French. Vice Chair Forney. Here. Chair Meyer. Present. You have a quorum. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? A move. So move. Any discussion? Secretary, please call the roll. Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. 
Vice Chair uh, Forney. Aye. Chair Meyer. Aye. You have four ayes and one absent. That carries. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of Wednesday, February 17th, 2021 and Wednesday, March 17th, 2021? Uh -huh. Any discussion? Secretary, please call the roll. Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Forney. Aye. Chair Meyer. Aye. You have four ayes and one absent. That carries. Is there a motion for resolution 2021-173, a resolution authorizing entering into limited use permit number, I'll, I'll read the number a bit, uh, with the state of Minnesota Department of Transportation to operate and maintain a trail serving Cedar Lake Regional Trail and Bryn Mawr Meadows Park that lies within the right of way Interstate 394. Uh, is there any request for presentation or a discussion? I am seeing none. Uh, so Secretary Ringle, please call the roll. Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Forney. Aye. Chair Meyer. Aye. You have four ayes, one absent. That carries. Is there a motion for resolution 2021-174, a resolution authorizing traffic control modifications at the intersection of Plymouth Avenue North and Theodore Worth Parkway, facilitating pedestrian crossings and access along Plymouth Avenue, accessing Theodore Worth Regional Park? So moved. Is there any uh, discussion or request for presentation? I'm seeing none. Secretary, please call the roll. Oh, excuse Vice me. President. Excuse me. I, I um, Commissioner Vita. It was just yay. I'm excited about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just yay. That's it. Thank you. We need right. an apology for that. <laughs> <laughs> there. I, I I don't know. I think you'd have to ask Council Rice if that's allowed. <laughs> I'm not sure if it is. Um, might be an open records thing. Um, <laughs> If there's no further discussion, uh, Secretary Ringel, please proceed with the roll. Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Forney. Aye. Chair Meyer. Aye. You have four ayes, one absent. Thank you. Is there a motion for resolution 2021-175? Resolution improve, approving installation of three public art murals by creatives after curfew on buildings in Beltrami, Logan, and Northeast Parks. Approving a license and maintenance agreement for the artwork with Beltrami, Logan, and Northeast Park neighborhood organizations. So moved. Thank you. And I'd like to request just a brief presentation just to show everyone what we're uh, doing with this uh, because I think it's it's a pretty cool thing that's happening. Uh, so, uh, clean Odell with a quick presentation. Thank you, Chair Meyer. Hi, Commissioners. Um, both the art proposal and the agreement are available for public uh, record in the agenda packet. And so in the interest of time, I will touch only on these slides very briefly. Um, we do have both Mike Farron with Beltrami Neighborhood Organization, or Neighborhood Council rather, and Michelle Marins online to say a few brief words. Chair Meyer, if you are open to it at the end. I certainly am. Okay, so this is a proposal for three building murals at three parks in Northeast, Beltrami, Logan, and Northeast. Next slide, please. The proposed concept is on the surface of these three buildings, um, with the theme being reflecting the identity and personality of each neighborhood with a focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And um, the artists is, are a team with the name Creatives After Curfew, they're gonna base their design on community feedback. This um, will not be paint on the surface of the buildings. <clears throat> it will be a material called PolyTab, 
Um, if you've seen the mural on Sheridan Elementary mural in Northeast, it's the same material as that. Next slide, please. So the sponsors are Beltrami Neighborhood Council, Logan Park Neighborhood Association, and Northeast Park Neighborhood Association. The Creatives After Curfew team, five artists are shown here with examples of their work. Um, Maya Lee Hartman, Leslie Barlow, Maria Robinson, Sammy Johnson, and Thomasina, also known as City Mischief. Next slide, please. So because they are waiting on community engagement before uh, finalizing a design, they they provided this mood board which shows that their intention is to use words and images that are important to the folks in each of these northeast neighborhoods. Next slide please. Um, the, the project has gone through all of our normal uh, review processes with staff and executive team and legal counsel and it is compatible with the master park plans for all three of these parks. Next slide please. This project is a $30,000 budgeted project funded completely by the sponsors, including a 10-year maintenance fund um, that's 10% of the total, and they are hoping to paint this summer. Next slide, please. So Mike Farron, if you're on right now, I'd like to have you um, say a few words. Yeah, I am here. And uh, thank you, commissioners and staff for having the opportunity to speak here. Um, I'll be brief. I just wanted to give a little context uh, on this project. Um, we originally got together pre-COVID. We were meeting in person originally, and the goal was to just bring more public art to Northeast. And I mean, Northeast has a great reputation as an arts district, but surprisingly, there's not a lot of public art. There's not a lot of murals. So uh, it was really after, um, you know, the murder of George Floyd and seeing all the murals popping up around the city. Um, just, you know, the artwork and the powerful messaging really inspired us to kind of hone in on creating murals uh, here in Northeast. And Colleen alluded to the fact that we've secured the funds. Each three neighborhoods has $10,000 committed to this project. Um, we put out a pretty expansive call for art and we had a, a ton of you know, excellent applicants, and we chose the the Creative After Curfew team. Um, and I think it's it's just really going to be a great opportunity for us to kind of, you know, jump into the community engagement and see not only what makes, you know, each specific neighborhood great, but just kind of bringing the Northeast vibe as a whole. Um, and uh, I guess I'm here to answer any questions as well. Um, I know Michelle is here to talk a little bit more specifically about the mural itself, but I just wanted to kind of get some background on the project. And as kind of Colleen alluded to do, we've been working on this now for uh, about a year and a half. So we're excited to move forward. Um, you know, we'd love approval from, from you all. And uh, yeah, look forward to, to continuing this process. Thanks, Mike. Michelle, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, uh, thank you so much uh, for entertaining our proposal. We have been working hard on this, uh, the three neighborhoods in Northeast Minneapolis. Uh, we're really proud to be the number one arts district in America uh, as voted by USA Today. And we want to showcase that in our neighborhood by having these murals and having something positive that people can enjoy uh, public art um, especially during this time when maybe you can't do some of the normal activities that you would be able to do in person, you can still walk around the neighborhoods and appreciate this artwork. Um, the topics of the murals, uh, what we asked for the muralists to put together are uh, themes around uh, the rich diversity of our neighborhoods. Northeast Minneapolis has often been home to uh, immigrant communities, new Americans and a very diverse audience uh, of people who live here and so we're really excited to be working with them and um, doing some CUME events to get some feedback and get some ideas on the final designs. But the themes will definitely be around the rich diversity in Northeast Minneapolis and um, something positive and bright that people can walk around and appreciate during this time. Thank you, Michelle. And that's our presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Michelle, Mike, and Colleen. I'm really excited about this project and uh, thank you to staff for facilitating this so that it can be brought to us in time or funds for it expired. Uh, is there any discussion? Yahoo! <laughs> Commissioner Vita. Yay! 
Thank you, Commissioner Vita. All right. Uh, seeing no further discussion, Secretary Ringgold, please call the roll. Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Forney. Aye. Chair Meyer. Aye. You have four ayes and one absent. That carries and concludes our business. Um, if there are no objections, I will declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you. I'd like to convene the Administration and Finance Committee meeting here at 8.51. With the Secretary. Vice President. I apologize. Vice President Vita. Present. Commissioner Musich. Present. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Assan. Chair Forney. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. I'll take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Secretary, could you please call the roll? Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Commissioner, er, sorry, Vice Chair Hassan. Chair Forney. Aye. You have three ayes, two absent. Thank you. I will um, take a motion to approve the minutes of both Wednesday, December 16th, 2020. Oh, wow, that year. Wednesday, um, March 17th, 2021. I moved. Uh, Secretary Ringo, would you please call the roll? Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Hassan. Chair Forney. Um, aye. You have three ayes, two absent. Thank you. We have, what, four resolutions um, with the first one. We'll move resolution 2021-177, resolution directing staff to review and update existing policies to incorporate a consistent approach for addressing conflicts of interest, upholding ethics, and ensuring productive work environments in Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board, community advisory committees, commissions, and boards. Thank you. Any discussion? Oh, well, we got a hand up. <laughs> uh, please, Commissioner uh, Music. Thank you, Chair Forney. For those of you that have read our agenda packet this evening, you'll know that I've, that I've asked for this item to be added to the agenda. Um, over the past three and a half years, I've had a number of participants in our community advisory committee process come to me um, with concerns about abusive behavior from other members of committees as well as the chairs of those committees and um, the current process is really a political process in that the board president is really the only one that can, can choose to address anything. Um, and, and in the case where the board president is the appointer of the individuals um, that complaints are being brought forward about, uh, the action has, has been to do nothing. Uh, and I don't know how we continue as an organization to ask people to participate in a public process when they know that it can be a completely hostile environment for them to work in and that we will do nothing to try to resolve that. We would never accept that for our staff. Uh, and so I don't believe that we should um, that we should accept that sort of behavior to continue in a volunteer setting either we should expect that everyone should have the same level of comfort and respect from the people around them, uh, whether they're an employee or a volunteer. So I would ask that you support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, discussion on that from other members? <laughs> Three of us? Um, I I'm real grateful that um, Commissioner Musich is bringing this forward. Um, 
there's been some real unfortunate behaviors that have been happening. And I think that the unfortunate thing is that it's not just with the bark board. But if we can set a standard um, to protect, you know, our community members um, when they are participating, I think is, is critical. And I hope that this will also um, pass on to you know, treatment of staff as well. So um, I, I really do appreciate that this is being brought forward and, and hope that um, we can turn the tide on this type of um, unnecessary behavior. So um, anyway, unless there's some more discussion and everything, uh, will the secretary um, please call the roll? The Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Hassan. Chair Forney. Aye. You have three ayes, two absent. Great. Moving on to our next resolution. Resolution awarding a construction contract to TMG Construction Inc. in the amount of $382,528 for the Mary Merrill Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board Headquarters Building Human Resources Office Rehabilitation Project, City of Minneapolis E Supplier Bid Event Number. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. MPLMN 00000. <laughs> Uh, 1388 and authorizing administration use of a 5% construction contingency up to $19,126 for necessary construction change orders that may arise with the contract pending approval by the City of Minneapolis Division of Purchasing and Civil Rights uh, Departments and authorizing the use of Mary Merrill Building Reserve Fund in the amount of $420,000. So moved. Thank you. Any discussion on this? Oh, yep, please, Commissioner Usage. Thank you, Chair Forney. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to see this moving, coming before us and hopefully moving forward out of committee this evening. Um, our employees need to feel comfortable going to HR. They need to feel like we've created a space for them to be supported in uh, when utilizing HR resources. and, and I'm, I'm impressed with what's been brought forward uh, in this resolution, and I, I think it achieves that. So I'd like to thank the people that have put in the time and energy to figure this out and design it in such a way as to provide our staff with dignity. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Any presentation? Nothing? Okay. I, I agree wholeheartedly and do support this. So, Secretary, would you please call the roll? Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Hassan. Chair Forney. Aye. You have three ayes, two absent. Thank you. Moving on to our next resolution. Okay, a resolution approving a shared uh, resolution 2021-179 resolution uh, approving a shared use agreement between Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board and Port Snelling Lease Housing Associates 1 LLLP um, FSLHA to allow the MPRB to connect to and discharge into the private sewer system owned and operated by FSLHA located at Port Snelling State Park and the upper post of Port Snelling State Park. Any questions? Anybody want a presentation? Not seeing any. Secretary, would you please call the roll? I just need someone to move it. Oh, it is yeah. okay. So I'll move. Oh, I'm sorry. I think everybody's falling asleep. Yep. Uh, Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Mr. Musich, and we didn't hear you. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Hassan. Chair Forney. Aye. 
You have three eyes, two absent. Thank you, Cliff. Okay, on to the next resolution, resolution 2021-180, resolution authorizing use of the state of Minnesota contract number 144394 with Pathfinders Trail Building LLC pending approval by City of Minneapolis Procurement Division in the amount of $216,150 to furnish and construct the park improvements at Perkins Hill Park and further authorizing the administrative use of a 10% construction contingency up to $21,615 for necessary construction change orders that may arise with a contract. Any questions, any demonstration uh, presentation? Doesn't look so, like that. So oh, moved. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, will the secretary please call the roll? Vice President Vita. Aye. Commissioner Musich. Aye. Commissioner French. Vice Chair Hassan. Chair Forney. Aye. You have three ayes, two absent. Thank you, Crystal. And on that, I will um, uh, adjourn our meeting. Declare our meeting adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you all. I almost made it to 9 o'clock. Okay, 9.01. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you all. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. You too.